Good morning. The Hearing Board of the South Coast Air Quality Management District is in session. Uh, today is Tuesday, October 29th, 2019, and the time is 9 o'clock a.m. We are meeting in the Hearing Board room in Diamond Bar. We have one matter on the calendar for today, and that is Browning Ferris Industries of California, Inc., Sunshine Can Canyon Landfill, case number 3448-15 for a short variance. And who is representing Sunshine Canyon this morning? Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the hearing board. Uh, Tom Bruin representing Browning Ferris Industries of California, Inc., the owner and operator of the Sunshine Canyon landfill. Thank you, Mr. Bruin, and I misspoke. Um, and who is representing the executive officer today? Uh, Sherry Hanizavara on behalf of the executive officer. Thank you, Ms. Hanisavra. Um, first thing I'll do, we have a few things to do. We have to mark a, a whole lot of exhibits. Um, but first, I'm going to ask anyone who wishes to testify today, including the members of the public who have filled out speaker cards and anyone else who wishes to give public comment, please rise to be sworn in. Please raise your right hand. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Um, Okay, first of all, uh, this is a continued hearing, a set, not a continued hearing, but we had a hearing on this, as we know, uh, for an interim variance. That, even though we had members of the public present, that hearing was not noticed because it was on an emergency basis, and we found good cause as a board to move forward with that interim variance hearing uh, absent notice to the public. Today, we are on a fully noticed short variance hearing. Um, and so the first question I have for the parties is, uh, would you uh, like to or do you have any objection to incorporating the evidence and testimony that we received at the interim variance hearing, Mr. Bruin? Uh, I was going to make that request, so no objection. Okay, thank you. Ms. Hanizavra? Uh, no objection from the district either. Thank you. So that evidence and testimony is hereby incorporated into the record. Um, in addition, we have received uh, a number of uh, exhibits that we will mark at this time. We've received uh, updated, I assume, proposed va short variance conditions, uh, and that will be marked as Exhibit C, as in Charlie. I'm sorry. Do you have that? Take a moment for all the board members to, not that one, that one. Um, and that will be marked as Exhibit C, as in Charlie, and I'll just show it to the party so we all are on the same page. Um, okay, we've also received a number of exhibits from um, Browning Ferris, and the first is a PowerPoint presentation uh, entitled Sunshine Canyon Landfill. It's an update with uh, today's date, and we will mark that as Exhibit 6. For petitioner, we've also received um, large copies uh, of both the repairs. Uh, it says closed landfill, City South GCCS fire repairs updated. It's a multi-page document, and we will mark that as Exhibit Number Seven. And we also have. Um, Sunshine Canyon Landfill Estimated Fire Damage Replacement Schedule, also on large paper, and we will mark that as exhibit number eight. And then finally, we have a number of additional, oh, sorry, oh, yes, thank you. We also received um, a document in a binder that is marked as, or that states on the cover, Sunshine Canyon Landfill, 2019 Saddle Ridge Fire Closed City Landfill Photos, with October 23rd as the date, and we will mark that as exhibit number nine. And finally, we do have a number of additional public comment letters and we will mark those as well at this time. Uh, I have first uh, a multi-page, I think it's two pages, uh, email from Meg Volk, uh, and it is dated October 27 at 2.10 p.m., and we will mark that as P11, Public Exhibit P, as in Peter, 11. We also received a 
email from Bill Cotter, and it is dated October 28th, 1124 p.m., and we will mark that as P12. Next, we have uh, an email from Andrea Provenzale, October 28th, uh, 1.40 p.m., and that will be P13. And finally, we have uh, a multi-page document entitled uh, Short Variance Hearing from Mr. Wade Hunter uh, with today's date, and we will mark that as P14. And I believe that's everything that we received at this point. And with that, I'm going to turn it, Mr. Bruin, to you for your opening. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the hearing board. Um, since the uh, testimony and evidence from the prior hearing has been incorporated in, into this hearing, I'm not going to rehash that testimony or evidence or the reasons why we think a variance is appropriate in this case. Uh, since, as a practical matter, the hearing board has already heard that evidence and made uh, findings in connection with the interim variance. Um, I would like to note that Exhibit 9, which is the compendium of pictures, is the copy that I promised you at the last hearing of the PowerPoint slide. So you've already seen these pictures in PowerPoint, but I wanted to give you physical copies for the record. Um, and since they've already been identified by Mr. Mills, I would ask that they be admitted in evidence. Any objection, Ms. Honey Savra? Right, no objection from the no. district. Okay, exhibit number nine is in evidence. So uh, I, I thought to perhaps expedite uh, today's hearing and maybe conclude before lunch. I have a, I have a bet writing on this. I, I want to inform you in the interest of full disclosure. But um, we have some good news, which is that uh, the repairs have uh, gone quite well. We're actually ahead of schedule. There has been a refinement of the plans, uh, which Mr. Mills is going to walk you through in a bit, um, and a refinement of the schedule. So uh, without further ado, and after uh, Air District Council's opening, I'd like to get immediately into Mr. Mills' testimony. We have Mr. Mills, who is the environmental manager for the landfill here along with uh, Elena Goodall, who's the Republic Services Director of in Engineering um, with us here today as well. Uh, both of these witnesses you've heard testify in the last hearing. So that's all I have for an opening, and I'll, uh, I'll defer then to Air District Council. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Honey Zavra, you're opening, and if you could just let us know are there, if there are any changes to the proposed variance conditions as well. Sure, uh, so good morning, Chairwoman Prusak and members of the board. Uh, subject to the evidence and the testimony that we hear today, um, as well as the proposed conditions uh, that have been shared with petitioner and agreed upon, um, of which we may still have a couple of additional tweaks that may come out um, during testimony, uh, the district does not oppose the granting of a short variance. Uh, with respect to the proposed conditions that you see before you, uh, condition 1A, has been revised uh, just for clarity. Um, it didn't appear clear that the uh, the one hour startup period um, applied only to flare number three. So uh, we just we just uh, clean that up a little bit. Uh, in addition, we added oh goodness one second uh, condition number six. Um, and this will require a petitioner to perform an inspection check of the flare components um, between. Uh, the time that the landfill is re-energized with grid power and then the initial startup of flare number three. Thank you very much. That's very helpful for the board. Mr. Bruin, you may present your witness. All right. Mr. Mills, would you uh, state your full name and indicate whether you've taken the oath? Good morning, Madam Chair and board members. My name is Josh Mills. I'm the environmental manager at Sunshine Canyon Landfill, and I have taken the oath. Mr. Mills, I believe we have a PowerPoint presentation that's been marked as Exhibit 6. So uh, I'd like you to begin uh, and go through that PowerPoint presentation. And uh, if you could go to the next slide. And is this the same slide that was shown to the hearing board at the last hearing? Yes, this slide was part of the original presentation that we reviewed during the last hearing. 
and to orient the board to the, uh, the plans that they're about to see. Uh, those plans relate to the purple area of the landfill site, which is entitled City South, which is, you've testified, a closed area of the landfill. That is correct. This is a general overview of the site. And as you've pointed out, the plans that we're going to be reviewing today pertain to the portion that is delineated by the red color down on the bottom of the slide, and that's the closed portion of the landfill, City South. Right. Would you go to the next slide, please? Now, um, is there a copy of this um, drawing in a larger uh, plan set that we've also marked as Exhibit um, 7? Yes, you will find a, a copy of this drawing. Um, it's numbered as sheet three in the plan set that you have in front of you. Now, has the hearing board seen this page before? They have. We reviewed this page during the last hearing, and um, in particular, this gives a general overview of uh, the damage that we sustained in City South. So in particular, the bold orange lines on the sheet um, indicate the gas connection piping that was uh, damaged in the fire. And the um, smaller black faded back lines are the portion of the gas collection and control system which were not damaged in the fire. There are also wells on this slide. Um, the wells are the small black dots with the associ associated well ID indicated next to those black dots. Senator has a There's a lot of black lines here. And uh, all those black lines are the one you're referring to. Yes. So the black lines on the sheet are the portion of the system that was not damaged in the fire. Okay, thank you. They can continue. Thank you very much. You may continue. Sure. And the only other thing that I wanted to point out on this slide was the 13 wells that are circled red. That's off to the right-hand uh, portion of the sheet. Um, those were the well casings that we had identified that were um, damaged in the fire. Would you go to the next uh, uh, slide, please? Now, is this uh, also shown in the plan set? Yes, you will, you will find this on a sheet four of the plan set. Now, is this a, a new drawing compared to what the hearing board saw at the last hearing? We have revised this drawing slightly, um, and in particular, we revised the phasing of this drawing. Um, so if you'll recall, the last iteration showed that the phase two portion of the repairs was going to occur off to the left hand uh, side of this sheet. And now we have flopped the phases so that phase two is phase three and vice versa. Um, and we did this because Upon a ver further evaluation, we realized that we could more quickly perform the repairs um, in the new phase two area and bring that portion of the landfill online quicker uh, rather than trying to perform the repairs in the old phase two or the, the new phase three. Um, and get that side of the landfill online. So this was all done um, in an effort to expedite performing these repairs. Right. Uh, Madam Chair, if there aren't any questions, we'll go to the next slide. Well, we'll I think we'll wait all right. and yeah. hold questions That's till the fine. end. Thank you. And then could you go to the next slide then, Mr. Mills? Well, and what does this uh, slide depict? This is sheet five in the design package that you have in front of you, and this shows the progress that we've made on these repairs as of yesterday, October 28th. So of note, you'll see that the repairs that have already been made in phase one and phase two are highlighted with the bold blue lines. 
and that shows that we've completed almost all of the gas connection piping in those phases and we are currently hooking up the actual well casing to the gas connection piping um, and, and that's what we're doing currently and will be doing for the next day or two. Now, you s talked about hooking up the well casing. You showed the hearing board pictures at the last hearing of pipes that were missing the well heads. So uh, are, as part of this work, are you having to replace some of those well heads? Yes, we are. Many of the well heads uh, sustained damage, to, so we are going to be replacing those well heads. And uh, so what are the next steps in terms of phases one and two, in terms of bringing them online? Another question from Senator. Uh, <clears throat> last diagram previously, the, well, the wells that were damaged were listed in red. Now, when you look at uh, page five, uh, there's, there's a, does it suggest that they're all been corrected? Good question, Senator. So what we've done so far is um, we've uh, exposed those damaged well casings and we've done it in a manner so that we've dug down into the surface and found a competent portion of the original well casing mm -hmm. and replaced it with good well casing um, and have temporarily capped those wells and are now in the process of installing well heads on those wells so that we can apply vacuum to those locations now, um, it, it, it doesn't mean that those damaged wells um, have been completely repaired. We won't know for sure if, if those wells um, are, are adequate gas collectors until we bring them online. But um, from a physical infrastructure standpoint, we have corrected all the deficiencies and are going to be connecting them to our gas collection system. Before us today is a short variance. Therefore, what is the estimated time for a com final complete repair of those wells? I think we're going to hear that uh, through the testimony. So that's why I'd like to wait I, and allow I the... know you want to wait, but the fact of the matter is coming back to this again would, would be more time consuming and misunderstood by me. I, I don't believe that's the case. I believe most of the testimony is going to be about where they are in the repairs and where they're going and the timing, and we'd like to hear that and not interrupt If you can give it. me a quick answer on that, I want to ask it again. Fine. If you can answer quickly, please. Sure. Um, so the, the phase two completion date per the updated schedule is... November 14th. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is there anything else, uh, Mr. Mills, regarding um, the current slide that you wanted to discuss, or should we move to the next slide? There will be many questions. I think it would be handled best if we went through. Well, I'm sorry, I, was, I misspoke. Do you have anything else you want to uh, uh, comment with respect to this slide? I think we've covered everything. All right, on this slide. let's move to the next one then. Can you tell us what this is? Yes, and this can be found on a sheet six of the package that you have in front of you. This is the updated schedule. You, you saw the first iteration of the schedule during the last hearing. Um, and in particular, we're going to be focused on the closed portion of the landfill schedule, which starts on line 16. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, members of the hearing board, uh, that schedule is also Exhibit 8, so it's, a, it's easier to read if you get out the big, big copy. And so perhaps, Mr. Mills, you could walk us through the changes in the schedule? Yes. So in particular, um, like I discussed, we reassessed our approach for implementing this replacement design and found a more efficient way to make the repairs in phases one and two. 
um, to expedite bringing on a portion of the well field as soon as possible. So you, you'll see that reflected in the schedule. Um, we've overlapped rows 19 and rows 23, um, which correspond to the both, both phases. So essentially, we're making repairs in both of these phases concurrently. Um, you'll also see the tasks that we have already completed um, were ahead of schedule and that the finish date has been um, moved forward to December 20th, 2019. Um, the next step in the process is basically finalizing the installation of the turndown kit for flare one, starting that flare, which will occur at the end of this week, November 1st, and then proceeding with um, phase three construction. Senator. That's the uh, task number 28, is that correct? On exhibit eight? Correct, task 28 is restarting flare one after we- Okay, now you're in the process of I'm explaining that right now, I think, is that correct? Correct. So what we're in the process of is installing the turndown kit, which is on line 21. And then we're going to start flare one, which is line 22 with the turndown kit. Mm -hmm. And then after we complete the other phases, we will uninstall that turndown kit and run the flare normally with, with its original design capacity. Then that process would be completed. Then that process would be completed in terms of that flare. Correct. Thank you. Yes. So Mr. Mills, we've been talking about the construction schedule for the repair of fire damage to the closed City South landfill. Once all those repairs have been completed, what else will be necessary to bring the closed landfill back into compliance with district's rule 1150.1 and per applicable permit conditions? After all the repairs have been completed in each phase and um, the turndown kit has been uninstalled and uh, flare one is operating normally, we will then need to retune and balance the well field um, to bring operating conditions back to um, an equalized state. What is involved in retuning a well field? Our gas operating and maintenance consultant, SES engineers, um, will be providing support via uh, well field technicians who will be going around and tuning each well um, as it's brought online and as more are brought online um, to balance the well field based on gas quality of that in particular well. Um, and that is a repetitive process. It, it will take um, a couple rounds of well field tuning to complete. Uh, does each uh, individual well have a valve that can be turned to quote unquote tune the well? That's correct. Each well has its own individual well head with a um, adjustable valve so that each collection point can be tuned based on um, specific compliance and gas quality parameters. And does that valve control how much vacuum is placed on that individual well? That is correct. So balancing the well field involves repetitively going to each well and doing small adjustments on the valve to make sure that the whole well field is balanced. Is that tr correct? Yes, it, it is a repetitive process and it takes um, multiple rounds to complete. Um, the reason being is you don't want to um, restore vacuum immediately to each location because they're um, there may be little changes in the gas quality as you bring wells online and you don't want to 
um, apply full vacuum to any collection point because you may be drawing in um, potentially oxygen or some other um, constituent that you do not want in the gas stream. Okay. So do you have an estimate of how long it will take to uh, tune and balance the well field on the closed city south landfill once all of the construction is complete and all systems are operational? Once all of the construction is complete, all the repairs have been made and everything is operational, it will then take approximately an additional two weeks to balance the well field. Now, currently, the closed landfill is under positive pressure. Is that correct? That's cor correct. And like we discussed last time, um, the trash continues to generate um, gas. So we, we've got the well field uh, temporarily capped and everything is sealed. Um, but until we start to apply vacuum to the wells, it will be under positive pressure. And uh, District Rule 1150.1 requires that we have negative pressure on the wells and to create negative pressure in the well field. Is that true? That is true. So that's why it will take some time after all the construction is complete to uh, convert the closed city landfill, which is currently under positive pressure, back to negative pressure, which is required by uh, district rules and the permit. That is correct. Right. Now, you indicated that SCS engineers uh, had quite a few personnel at the site, uh, some of which will be involved in tuning and balancing the well field once the construction is complete? That is correct. We're, we're going to dedicate approximately five technicians from SCS engineers um, to tune the well field. Now, once you have achieved the point in time when uh, you believe the well field is uh, under negative pressure, um, that's something we can uh, promptly notify the district staff of. Is that correct? Absolutely. Right. That's all I have for now. Thank you. Ms. Honey Zavra, do you have questions for Mr. Mills? Uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, so I guess the first question um, would be, uh, just maybe for clarification purposes, uh, the process of retuning and balancing the well field, will that begin... Um, on December 20th, assuming that um, that this all goes to according to the schedule in Exhibit 8? Yeah, so it'll be a, a phased approach just like our repair schedule. Once um, each phase comes online, we're going to immediately start tuning that phase. And then ultimately, once the final phase is complete, we need to um, tune the well field as one contiguous um, body of infrastructure. And, and that's what we were referring to when we said we needed to tune and balance the well field. So um, I just, I just want to point out um, that the, and maybe this isn't the right time, so um, stop me if it is. Uh, the, the last variance condition, condition 28, may need to be tweaked a little bit just to, um, to clarify um, that the variance actually won't terminate once the equipment um, has been fully restored. It has to, we maybe need to add a little piece that, um, the variance terminates once the equipment has been fully restored and the well field has um, fully been fully retuned. And of course, we can refine that as the hearing goes on. Is that your only question? Uh, that was my question. I'd let, I think Dr. Bernstein has a question, but I have questions on that. Good, go ahead. Right, through the chair, I just want to clarify did we get a date when that tuning would be completed? <clears throat> So, good question. I didn't include it in the construction schedule. Um, it, it's something that w we could include going further, but in general, it'll take approximately two weeks from December 20th to complete that task. I think we need, and that was my question. So my question was, we are now in a short variance hearing, no longer in the interim, where we knew when it was going to end, um, so I need to understand, the board need to understand what you're asking for. Uh, condition number 28 is not sufficient in my mind. Um, we're not going to leave an open-ended, nor can we, because short variances can only last for 90 days, including interim relief. Um, so 
My question is, can you give us a date, uh, an estimated date, so that we understand when you're asking for um, and we can frame uh, a little more precisely? My hesitation in giving uh, an estimated date, I'm happy to give an estimated date, but the qualifier that we're concerned with is mm -hmm. uh, if something really major happens that disrupts our schedule, uh, what is the process for coming back to this board and informing you of that? And I know that a short uh, variance is subject to a 90-day limitation. So one of the questions I had is would it be possible to ask for a 90-day short variance with the understanding that as soon as we have the well field into compliance, the variance would terminate? I, I think it's m personally, and again, you know, we have five members of the sport, but um, I like to see it the opposite way. I know it's a hassle to have to come back and modify a short variance. However, um, we are all aware of what's happening in the surrounding community while this um, uh, collection system is 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 not online, and so we'd li I'd like to see a target date, um, and then we can give some. Uh, obviously, you know, we wouldn't want it to be unrealistic. We'd want it to be as conservative as we can, um, but still not give full ninety days. I I I haven't gone back, and I don't remember the date. By oh, which. it would be towards the end of January. I might suggest January. And, it, 15th. That, and that's ninety days from ex parte relief. Well, that's a good question. Is it 90 days it from be. today or from the ex parte? No, it's all, I'll, I'll go back and look, but my understanding is it can't be more than 90 days, including all relief that you have been granted. Well, that would mean October 15 plus 90 days puts us in the middle of January. If we're projecting, if all goes well, that uh, we'll, we'll be done with construction around December 20, you add two weeks onto that for balancing the well field, that gets us to around January 7th or 10th with the holidays. Um, okay. So it, it makes, it seems to make sense. Uh, so th that's why I would 90 ask, days as an outside. That's what I would request, yes. Okay. Uh, and you, and just, just to be clear again, uh, we would have to re-notice this very differently if it was a, if it goes beyond 90 days. So. Uh, we would have to know about that very far in advance. Well, my understanding is that a, a, a regular variance that has, that's longer than 90 days requires 30 days public notice. And yeah, it's I had published. Dis I had discussed with district council that if something untoward happens, I'd contact district council well before that 30-day period, and we would discuss you know, notifying the clerk of the need for an extended variance period. Hopefully that's not going to happen. Um, one thing I would like to mention, and there's a question I forgot to ask Mr. Mills, if I could just uh, reopen his questioning for just one follow-up question. Please. Uh, Mr. Mills, do you have a current update on when power to the site, full power to the site, will be restored from the utilities? Um, based on our last conversations with Southern California Edison, and um, keep in mind that these are just estimates, but they've told us that they plan on restoring power to the site by um, the end of this week. Have you also been getting notices from uh, Southern California Edison of planned public safety power outages in uh, affecting the landfill? I have. Um, uh, have any been instituted thus far? I'm, I'm not sure that they have just because we don't currently have utility power from Southern so. California Edison. <laughs> So you just don't know, but but that is a potential that you could also have a public safety power outage. Yes, that is a potential. I just wanted to follow up on the status of power. But you're over the 200 hours at this point, correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. I just point that out when we're talking about the variance period, we also have that unknown, which hopefully won't be an unknown much longer but the question being, when will utility power? You would need a variance for the generator through the end of the year, which would be a different time period, because then that 200 hours would reset. Uh, oh, yes. OK. OK, that was one of the questions I had, so uh, that was answered. Um, and are you on, so you are on schedule to, um, with the turndown kit, start flare one 
on Friday, which is November 1st? That is correct. Okay. Do you know, uh, Mr. Mills, um, whether the facility has uh, continued to receive complaints? I mean, I would assume so, but do you know that? We are occasionally notified um, by AQMD inspectors when we receive complaints, and I, I have heard of a few, yes. Do you know if any, uh, any, any NOVs, notices of violation, have issued due to uh, odor complaints? No, since uh, the fire, no NOVs have been issued due to odor complaints. Okay. Um, is there, oh, go ahead, Mr. Brown, uh, did you have a? If I may clarify, we know there have been some confirmed odor complaints that under district rules could result in issuance of a notice of violation. We just haven't received any yet. Okay. Um, and that is, I, I know you're well aware because one of the conditions is, uh, I think it's 25, um, that granting of relief is, does not exempt from complying with all other rules and regulations, including nuisance. Yes. And, and we couldn't give a variance from nuisance. We understand. Okay. Just wanted that to be very clear on the record. Um, let me answer that question. The, is there any part of the schedule, well, is there any part of the schedule that you feel, I understand there are unforeseen, and I do, I think it's very encouraging that you are ahead of schedule and that everything you said would be done by today has been completed. Um, is there any parts of the schedule that, uh, that you could um, say will be done with certainty by certain dates and, can, and um, uh, agree to as part of conditions, or is it all subject to unforeseen? events yeah this is our best estimate at, at this time you know and and we we learn more every day and so far we've been um we've made great progress as as you mentioned so it's been working out well i think we, we've included um contingencies in this uh, schedule as well um some of the unforeseen issues that could come up and stall our progress could be something like equipment and failures um, you know uh, parts availability at this point we have most of what we need to make um, all of the repairs and replacement but I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that could come up to, to stall progress but um, and another fire <laughs> hopefully not yes um, I just had a question, uh, and it escaped me. Um, oh, conditions of the uh, the interim variants. Um, I know not all, I don't believe all of them have come. Those conditions which require uh, monitoring, inspections, um, I don't recall if you testified whether all of those have been complied with. Yes, we're complying with all the conditions. Um, with respect to the monitoring conditions, um, now that we're wrapping up repairs in the phase one and phase two area, we're going to recommence um, surface emission monitoring uh, shortly. We've already coordinated with our consultants um, and they are on the schedule to get out there and perform that monitoring. Thank you. Um, one, and the question I had that escaped me. At the last hearing, did you testify or did someone testify that there were 50 employees who are working on this? Uh, did I get that right? Correct. 50 in total, about 20 from SES engineers and approximately 30 from a Landmark Environmental. And that's still the case? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Board members. Uh, Ms. Verduca Peralta has a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Mills, in your discussions with Edison, uh, did you, um, were you given a date by them at all and were dates discussed in reference to regeneration? We've been trying to get a definitive date from them, but um, they just provide us with Edison. estimates. When did you speak to them last? Um, earlier this week, so yesterday. Yesterday, okay. And did they say that they would uh, be uh, 
conducting an on-site inspection before they regenerate? Um, or regenerated, I should say. No, we, we didn't discuss that. And uh, the way it works is um, their portion of the infrastructure includes everything up to our meter right. and then everything after our meter is our infrastructure and our responsibility to inspect. Um, that said, we, we have already had our consultants, our um, licensed electricians out and inspected our portion of the utility to make sure that everything is in good working order. Was there any damage to the panel, the electrical panel at all? There was some damage to a few power poles, which we had to replace because they were on our side. And then we did have to restring a portion of the um, 480 wire. But the actual electrical panel? No, it, there, was, there was no damage identified at the electrical panel. OK, thank you. Sure. Mr. Balagopala? Uh, yes, Mr. Mill. I noticed the last time you, you had revised the schedule uh, for the turn down kit be before it was two days. Now it appears that five days uh, was the reason for that. Was it difficult to install, though? Yes, you're correct. We, we have revised the schedule for the installation of the turndown kit, and we, we did run into a couple challenges installing the equipment. Um, we think we've overcome that, um, and, and we're making good progress, and um, we'll be able to meet that deadline. So uh, is it completed, or it's still uh, you, you expect to do it by tomorrow? I do expect it. I would say, yeah, by by tomorrow, correct. And then you're going to take pictures and send it to the, uh, it's required? That is, and we will. How many are you blocking? How many? Uh, there are six burners in total on that style of flare stack, and we will be blocking four of the burners to get our anticipated flow. Uh, uh, talking about the flow, what, at what point do you consider that the landfill is operating properly? You had a, an idea how much flow you had before to the flare, and is that one of the measures you'll take if you're getting that or a higher amount? Absolutely. Definitely one of the measures that we'll be taking into account. So pre-fire, the flows were um, approximately 2,200 SCFM to that flare stack. Um, that's non-normalized. I, I should have clarified. Uh, normalized to 50% methane, it was, um, I believe, right around 17 to 1,800 SCFM with 50% methane. And so that's what you, uh, your goal is to, and that's what the fine-tuning is, you're normalizing which wells have the higher methane and so forth? Yes, that's, that's one of the intents of the fine-tuning, correct. So that, that'll give you, a, once you have 1,800 or, you know, or not normalized, so that'll, is, is when you, that's one of the uh, parameters you use to say, okay, we are, you have good operation? Yes, that is correct. What, what are the other ones? Is it also the pressure, the negative pressure? Pressure is another big one. And then um, surface emissions. Um, we have to check for that and make sure that we don't have any integrated exceedances on the landfill surface um, or instantaneous exceedances that we identify throughout the repair areas. So when are you going to start the surface monitoring? You said very soon. Uh, in a week, I mean, phase one, phase uh, two areas, basically? Co correct. It's, um, I, I know we've got a requirement to... Um, expeditiously start as soon after repairs are completed um, and I, I do have our consultants set up to start that monitoring within seven days of completing those repairs seven days okay and it is safe now to walk in those areas in those areas those areas um, again have been repaired meaning we've had heavy equipment run over those areas and we don't believe that there's um, unsafe conditions due to the voids that we talked about uh, last week because the weight of the heavy equipment most likely collapsed those voids. Okay. 
Uh, I also noticed that you had updated your county replacement plan and city north uh, replacement. It went from uh, 71 days to 62 days from the prior. And, and is that where you get it? Uh, it, especially the flare uh, three pipe heading installation went from uh, 10 days to seven days. So the, these were corrections you were making based on feedback you got or because y your days went down from the other two? Correct. It, th this is updated based on the progress that we've made. Okay. Okay, thank you. Sure. Other questions? It's always okay to speak, Senator. Mr. Mills, uh, your charts and diagrams presented today compared to your diagrams last week, any significant changes in two, phase one, I mean, phase two and phase three in terms of days duration of operation? Yeah, there have been some changes, Senator, um, in particular, when we flopped the phases, um, we added uh, some days to the new phase three because we evaluated that area and determined that there's actually additional grading that needs to occur so that all of the gas connection piping will drain properly and the liquids don't block the gas flow in the pipe. So this extra activity of grading the surface before you install the piping is going to take a couple more days. But was grading the surface for phase two, uh, phase three is different from phase two? It is um, just because of the nature of the natural disposition of the landfill. Um, the new phase two is primarily on a slope. So we can take advantage of that natural slope. Um, by placing our pipes in a way that will drain with the slope, whereas phase three is more on a um, flat area and, and we have to create artificial ramps and um, drainage pathways for, for the, the current pipeline. Phase, the current phase three. Correct. But uh, looking at the diagrams and the wells that were damaged, there's more activity speculated and the f previous diagram then where it shows phase three compared to phase two today, there's more activity in terms of making repairs. You have more wells that well has ever damage. Sure. Um, so let's see. You're right. So on phase three, we've got um, 65 wells. And on phase two, we have 32 wells. Um, and, and these are the wells that we're installing new well heads on and then reconnecting to vacuum. So you're right, there are more wells on phase three than phase two. Well, you could not be certain that, that you would finish it as a guesstimated time, the job, 90 days, whatever the case may be. Uh, can you anticipate that there could be a slippage? Um, you got these, these days are changing. Sure. In Under terms of duration. Mm -hmm. Underst yeah, understood. Um, and again, th this is our best estimate that we have right now. There, there could be a slippage. And as I, I previously stated, this could be attributed to um, things like equipment failure. Maybe one of the pipe welders goes down um, and we can't quickly find a replacement for it or, or something like that. But that being said, we have built contingencies into this plan um, so that the, the deadlines are, are somewhat conservative as we see them today. What about the weather? Is it a real factor? Yes. Yes, sir. We uh, that included- That the slip as well. Is that correct? That could. And we tried to account for that by including some contingency days in this schedule. Um, so if you look at the tasks that have already been completed, we've been beating the deadline so far. That's because we haven't encountered any um, bad weather days. We've, we've been able to work straight through the schedule. In terms of the flares, flare one, nothing is completed. Started, but not completed. November, 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 December. 
on flare one, we, we haven't started installing the turndown kit. Correct. Uh -huh. So it's not completed. And so whether it could play a factor, that's the time of year it could happen. Sure, w weather could be a factor, and, and we've tried to account for that in this schedule. So anyway, again, once again, nothing is completed from the start of flare one yet. Some, most of it has not been started, according to your schedule. Uh, Senator, are you talking about whether or not the work on floor one has started yet? Right, it has not. So it's in November. Right, is, so just to clarify, and I'm, I'm hoping that this will answer your question, but we, we have started installing that turndown kit. We're almost complete with installing that turndown kit. Um, we, we will be tomorrow. And then um, we'll be starting up flare one to pull gas from phases one and two the following day. So that's, or I'm sorry, Friday. The reason why I refer to your, your chart here, your dates, schedule, because when the chair asked you a question regarding completion of final testing, you couldn't give it a definite answer. And there's a reason why you can't, because it's, you can't predict it based on extenuating circumstances. Yeah, and again, ba based on our knowledge of what needs to be done in the well field, this is our um, best, guess. best realistic guess, correct? Um, one, one moment, Ms. Verdugo Peralta will have a question, but I just have a question on that. Um, so as we're seeing, it, it's a somewhat tight schedule and because we're here on a short variance, um, I, I keep trying to count, but my counts keep coming off by a day. So it's somewhere between January 11th and the 13th, because we would have to include the 15th. So I just wanted to make sure that I hear on the record that as soon as you know that it looks like, but that's very tight in, ter in terms of the two weeks you said you need after the 20th. So I just want to make sure that you'll be in here as soon, you'll be filing as soon as you know you will not meet that 90 day time frame, frame, you'll be asking as soon as possible for a regular variance. Is that the plan? Yes. Yes. Okay. As soon as we know, we'll be asking for a regular variance if needed. Because the board will, will need to hear that sooner rather than later. Understood. Thank you. Ms. Verdugo Peralta, you had a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Getting back to the electrical side of it, I don't see anywhere on this plan that you are um, stating what your <clears throat> estimated date for regeneration would be. And my concern is this, that you have to get in the queue for Edison to come out and, and turn your service back on. The fact that they are right now um, pretty busy with things in the surrounding areas, that may be a delay. So I would like to see on this chart somewhere where there's an estimate of how many days you think or the, in your discussions with them, what their estimated uh, time frame would be. Mm -hmm. and, and just so that you know, we, we have been trying to get into that queue, um, working with them, but as you mentioned, I know that they're spread very thin right now. They've gotten resources all over trying to repair a lot of their infrastructure um, and we, we frequently follow up with them and, and have these conversations with them and they tell us that they're working towards um, repowering um, our site. So um, as far as including it in this schedule, we, we tried to focus on strictly the gas collection and control repairs, um, but to that end, I, I see your point, um, that's something that we could try and figure out how to incorporate. Because the delay realistically could be a week or two, realistically. Sure. So I, I really think you, you need to incorporate it somewhere in this schedule because per that may throw everything off. Perhaps a condition um, requiring petitioner to continually 
follow up with Edison regarding um, rein, rein, whatever it is called, a re regeneration of the power uh, to the facility. We could have such a condition and so inform district staff as soon as the power to the site is restored. So there would be a two-pronged condition that we, uh, you know, make our best efforts to um, communicate with Southern California Edison to restore power to the site and inform the district staff as soon as power is restored. Thank we'll you. we'll worry that, but thank you. Uh, any other questions? Yes, Mr. Balagopalan. Uh, Mr. Mills, um, was, so flare number three, the piping, the header piping was damaged during the fire? Mm, correct. And so that's why you're replacing that. Oh, you replaced it already and you're going to start up. Now, uh, those County North and uh, the uh, County and City North, those are considered active? Yes. Portion. This is the, so then the different rule applies to that site, 1150 versus 1150.1, right? Correct. For that, I think the, yeah, so I'm wondering all the references here is to 1150.1 as far as conditions, whether uh, any of those, you know, should reference 1150 or not. And maybe. I believe 1150.1 does apply to that side of the landfill. I think the reference is correct. Correct. Okay. Um, so then I, it looks like from the revised condition, uh, the district uh, may, uh, looks like you, you, you'll be allowed to test flight number three for an hour after you get uh, the Edison power back. Yeah, as the condition states, um, 1A and 6. Yes, we've got a startup period only for flare 3, approximately one hour duration. Um, I believe the testimony is they do have power to flare 3. The problem was the gas connection. Is that right? No, we, we do not have power to flare 3. Flare 3 um, is powered by Southern California Edison. And, and that's again, number 6 is when it's re-energized which means when you got utility power, basically. Correct, and, th and that is for the backup flare, flare three. Flare three, yep. okay, thank you. Sure. I'm trying to look back at my notes, but is that a change, the one hour startup time? Was that the amount of time, or was it 30 minutes? Was, was it 30 minutes? It was always one hour. Okay, so I, I've, I'm sorry, since I asked the question, Mr. Mills, if you could answer that, was it always one hour? <laughs> No, it was not always was one not. hour. Okay, so it is an increase. Correct. Okay, and what was that based on? I'm sorry. Um, it was based on some, well, what we've done so far is, is we've inspected um, the infrastructure to the best of our ability, but until we are able to restore utility power to Flare 3, we won't know if uh, any of the operating software um, or chart recorders or any other compliance points are operating uh, correctly. And I'll ask the district at the appropriate time, but that has been communicated to district staff? that. You, that more time is required for the startup of the Flare 3? That has, and, and that's something that we discussed during the last hearing. And that's why we're seeing it on the revised conditions, and that's because the district has considered that and agrees that that's a, that is a proper amount of time? That is correct. Okay. Did you still have questions? No, I, I, I think before there was a discussion on whether they should bring in a backup generator, but now I think the condition reflects after they, they get re-energized with grid power, then they will do the, the uh, startup. So they don't have to bring a backup unit to do that. Okay. Any other questions from any other board members or either of the parties for Mr. Mills? Okay. Um, Mr. Bruin, uh, did you want to introduce uh, your other witness? Uh, no, we have no other witnesses, but I would ask that our exhibits um, 
uh, seven, eight, and nine be admitted in evidence? I'm sorry, six, seven, and eight. Nine's already in evidence, which is the pictures. Oh, correct. Uh, Ms. Honeyzavra, any, uh, any objection? Uh, no objection. Okay. Uh, exhibits six, seven, and eight are now in evidence. Okay. Um, Ms. Honeyzavra, I will uh, turn it to you. Uh, I see you have Ms. Shibata. Um, would you like to present any testimony? Uh, can I ask for five minutes off the record? Um, I want to discuss a, a potential new condition with um, petitioner. Okay. Yes, okay. please. We'll Thank take five you. minutes off the record. We're off the record.
see that. <clears throat> We're back on the record. Um, okay, Miss Honey Zavra, um, was there additional? Well, we do need wording for that. Uh, the one uh, Miss Verduco Peralta wanted to add, but did you have additional um, conditions you wanted to propose? Uh, yes, but um, I'm going to call Angela Shibata uh, to kind of give you a little bit of a context for the conditions that we're adding. Okay. Um, so uh, again, calling Miss Angela Shibata. Uh, uh, Please state your name and position uh, with the district. My name is Angela Shibata. I am a super, supervising air quality engineer at South Coast AQMD. And have you taken the oath today? Yes, I have. So Ms. Shibata, you recall during the interim variance, um, the district proposed a condition um, that it would work with petitioner to calculate excess emissions. Um, what information or what additional information um, does the district need in order to make those calculations or to verify those calculations? The excess emissions from the landfill gas collection system being down, um, we would need to know the quantity of landfill gas being generated at the site, uh, how much is being collected at the site, and how much is being combusted in each of the control equipment to then calculate how much is fugitively being emitted to the atmosphere. So, um, so in order to uh, make those calculations, um, I get, well, I can either give you the conditions now, I can state them, or I can have her walk through them. Whatever you think makes the most sense, since I don't know what they are. Okay, so, um, so let's, let's walk through the first proposed condition. Um, so we'd like to add a condition, and we've discussed these with petitioner, and we've come to an agreement on them. Um, we're adding a condition 21G. Um, so Ms. Shibata, can you um, read through the new condition and then also explain its purpose? So condition 21 is the written progress reports, the inspections, basically a bi-weekly report of all the updates to the, to the facility and the, the inspections and reporting. So we plan on adding uh, another condition to that of information that should be provided bi-weekly, which is the daily landfill gas flow, so that's standard cubic feet per day. Can you Oh, yes, sorry. So 21G, the addition should read the daily landfill gas flow, parentheses, SCF slash day, end parentheses, collected from the landfill and combusted in each flare, parentheses, flare number one, three, nine, 10 and 11, close parentheses, end of sentence. And then the second uh, proposed condition or newly proposed condition, um, we want to add a condition number 24. Um, Ms. Shibata, again, can you please explain the purpose um, of this new proposed condition, how it will allow us to um, move forward with our excess emissions calculations, and then we can read it aloud. Um, so the condition 21G gives us the forward-facing amount of landfill gas being generated and uh, controlled in the respective control equipment. So that tells us um, how much is being controlled, but to understand how much landfill gas is being collected from a historical context, how much landfill gas is uh, on average being collected day to day, month to month, we're requesting for histor historical data from earlier in the summer so that we have an idea of what that value is so we do not underrepresent or overrepresent the amount of emissions that would be emitted fugitively. And then and that would uh, answer the question of the quantity generated? Yes. Thank you. And that condition would read, petitioner shall submit by email to Angela Shibata, um, I'm going to list the people because the email addresses are all the same in the previous conditions. John Anderson, Jason Aspel, and the Rule 1150 notifications email address. 
within seven calendar days after the variance is granted, and daily landfill gas flow, parentheses, SCF slash day, close parentheses, combusted in each flare, parentheses, flare number one, three, nine, 10, and 11, close parentheses, from June 1st, 2019 through October 29th, 2019. So this condition, like I had mentioned, will give us the total flow uh, being collected, gen being generated from the landfill and collected, and the respective uh, flow going to the individual controlled devices. Can you read that again into the record? Because I, I don't think we got everything. And can you, did you say where that would go, what number it would be as well? We're proposing to insert this as number 24, pushing the rest of the conditions down. Okay. And then if you could just repeat it so we could fill in the blanks. Yes. Petitioners shall submit by email to Angela Shibata, John Anderson, and Jason, or Jason Aspel, and Rule 1150 notifications within seven calendar days after the variance is granted, the daily landfill gas flow in Sorry, SCF slow, per day. Wait, wait, slow down again. Within seven calendar days after the variance is granted. Is granted. Comma, really, because that's a parenthetical phrase. Um, the daily landfill gas flow. The daily landfill gas flow. In standard cubic feet per day, so we, uh, abbreviate that with SCF per day, combusted in each flare, flare number one, three, nine, 10, and 11, from June 1st, 2019 to October 29th, 2019. Thank you. May I ask a point of clarification? Uh, the phrasing within seven calendar days after the variance is granted, are you talking about starting today, the regular variance? Yes. Could, could we put in the word short, regular? So short, we would put in short variance. Short variance, thank you, I'm sorry. And we would say this short variance. That would that would be very precise. Mm -hmm. yes. Mr. Balagopalan had a clarification. And I know uh, Mr. Mill said there's a difference with the 50% methane is normalized. So are you looking at normalized data or just, uh, you know? Uh, we, we would like to have actually the, the non-normalized and normalized data okay. just to make sure Everything. Yeah, both, you have both. Yes. So should we want to include that? Or is it understood? I mean. I, I believe that that can be added for clarification, but would like to Picture. confirm. Yeah. Okay. You may continue. Okay. I'm, I'm I apologize. I was writing something. <laughs> no, no, I, I was just going to comment on the request for both normalized and non-normalized. Uh, my uh, team is telling me that we may not have the normalized data on a daily basis. Um, but the, the non-normalized, the actual flow is, is easier. That would, that would be sufficient. We can work with that data. Now, right now, we can we, we may continue. Uh, so, actually, those are my only questions for Ms. Shibata at this time. Um, so, I open it up to um, Mr. Bruin and the board. Mr. Bruin, do you have any questions for Ms. Shibata? Uh, no, I do not. Thank you. Board members, Ms. Verdugo Peralta. What happened to the condition regarding uh, contacting Edison and getting better dates? Oh, we have to write that. It, that is still the parties still agree to that. Is that correct? This is the, uh, the one having to do with the uh, working with Southern California Edison. Uh, yeah, that's a condition I think we need to word. 
That is, um, that is correct, though. We definitely still have that on the table. We also wanted to propose a change to condition 28, which will become the 29, to provide notice to the district when we have balanced the well field, since the variance would need to continue through that balancing process, which we estimate to take about two weeks. If we leave that condition in, usually we don't like conditions that that purport to be the term of the variance itself, but if we are going to have that in there, we need to be more precise and also we would have to have the date uh, of the short variance can go through, which is, I believe, we tried recalculating it January 12th, and so, or whichever occurs, whichever occurs first. I think it's January 13th, but I would actually prefer substituting that date in for what's currently the last condition. Although if it is restored first, then the variance would end. Uh, correct. But we, we would, but I, we should all recalculate, but it would include, the date would, in, the 90 days includes October 15th. Uh, we calcul I calculated it as the 13th. I think staff did two counting the <coughs> Including the 15th. No, if it includes the 15th, then, then it, it would be the, be the 12th, 12th, not yeah. the 13th. 12th, okay. Right, it's not your usual seven days from this where you'd start counting the day after because it does include all the days of variance relief. Senator. Yeah, the question that's been asked to Mr. Mills, he answered, but the question was, would you let us know at some time in advance before the expiration of the time that you may need an extension? So therefore, that being... They, the they already answered, they, um, they need not only to let us know if they need an extension, they cannot get an extension. They would need to file for regular variance relief, so they'll have to do that well in advance. But the question was, will they do it as soon as they know, understanding that beyond reasonable control at that point will have to do with how quickly repairs were done. Right, and we, we understand it would be our obligation to notify the clerk uh, and to file a petition for a regular variance as soon as we know that we're going to need more than the 90 days. And the process is that as soon as you know, think you know, you file for a petition of a regular variance, and if it turns out you meet all the requirements prior there to that date, you just take it off calendar. File in advance. That that certainly makes sense. If we'll we if we are in doubt, we'll file, and we can always take it off calendar. Yes, yes. that makes of sense. Of course. Did you have a question for Ms. Shibata? Yes, uh, Mr. Balagopal. Uh, Ms. Shibata, on the perp engine, I know this is not addressed here. I think you mentioned that they have sixty days, or is it ninety days? Uh, the the perp regulation allows them to. Can you check the date of your regulation too? If you got the updated one because they revised it recently? The condition... Uh, can you say uh, cite the date of the regulation order? Uh, um, I don't know that I have that. that? Okay. Uh, I have the this engine's perp regulation conditions. Okay. And, and this condition reads... This registration is not valid for the operation of generators used to provide primary or supplemental power to a building, facility, stationary source, or stationary equipment, except during the following scenarios. Unforeseen interruptions of power from the serving utility, and it has semicolon. I'm going to say the, the punctuation so that it's a little more clear. Uh, maintenance and repair operations, semicolon and electrical upgrade operations that do not exceed 60 calendar days. 60. So the 60 calendar days is associated with electrical upgrade operations. Okay. If they're getting the power within a couple of weeks, then that should, uh, is, is your understanding that they'll stop using the perp engine also once they have the? My understanding is once power from Edison is restored to the facility, the PERP engine and the emergency engine will no longer be needed to power the flares to control the, con the uh, landfill gas. Okay, thank you. Will, they'll, they'll no longer be needed unless there's another power outage? Correct. Okay. Okay, 
Um, any other questions for Ms. Shibata? Thank you very much, Ms. Shibata. Um, any other? Well, actually, I had a question, but I don't, I don't think Ms. Shibata can answer this unless you happen to know it. Um, are you aware, I know you are not an inspector and you do not work in that, um, but do you know about complaints? Um, have, they been, have there been verified complaints um, and NOVs issued, if you know? So, so my understanding is that there have been verified complaints, but I'm not certain uh, when those plaints, complaints have occurred or if a notice of violation has been issued in regards to those complaints at this time. Is there anyone who might be able to answer that question? Uh, there is. Um, we would need a couple of minutes to call him downstairs, uh, Mr. John Anderson. Um, if, if we can get five minutes, we can, we can try to get him down here. Okay, and I understand it's not, uh, it is relevant, but not relevant. I mean, it's relevant to the whole context, uh, but, you know, it's not a, a variant, but it's not a variance from nuisance, and so we want to understand what's going on. Um, let's take a break and do that, because I also, um, uh, I want to take some time to make sure we've read the, uh, all the public comments uh, as well. Um, and I and Dr. Bernstein was indicating he may have questions uh, for one of the parties based on some of the public comments. So let's take a 15 minute break and um, come back at uh, 1040. We are off the record.
We're back on the record. Um, we left off. Ms. Shibata was going to ask Mr. Anderson to sh to uh, to come down. So thank you very much. And if you can enter, oh, I'll have to swear you in. I believe if you can rise to be sworn in. Please raise your right hand. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, Ms. Honeysuffer. Uh, so I'm, I'm calling Mr. John Anderson uh, to testify. Uh, Mr. Anderson, can you please state and spell your name for the record? My name is John, J-O-H-N, Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. Uh, and what is your position here at the district? My position is error quality, analysis, and compliance supervisor. And you just took the oath a moment ago? I did. Okay, so um, we're going to kind of follow up on some of the questions regarding um, uh, odor complaints and, and enforcement action. So uh, to start off, um, are you familiar with the variance proceedings that have been happening over the course of the past week with Sunshine Canyon? I am aware that they've been taking place, but I've not been following closely. Okay. Um, are you aware of whether or not the district has received any verified odor complaints since the outbreak of the Saddle Ridge fire? I am. Uh, and how many uh, verified complaints has the district received, um, if you can estimate? I can count them here. I believe the fire took place on, was it the 16th? 11th. 11th. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll have to... Uh, Count my data here. So that's okay. I believe it's along the lines of twenty seven on different dates since the 11th. Ver 27 verified? 27 verified from what I can see from my data right here. Um, I would have to have a conference with the Inspector Larry Israel to verify or to confirm that. Um, but based on the codes we typically use, uh, that's what I'm counting up here. Thank you. And just for the record, um, uh, Mr. Israel had to be off-site today um, to, to give a presentation at a task force meeting, um, but we can contact him if, if the board prefers. Um, but if I, can, um, if I can ask a couple of additional questions, uh, are you aware of how many, um, or rather can you tell us how many verified odor complaints there were um, in September and in the lead up to the fire on October 11th? And you can take your time. Well, I can tell you that there were a total of 95 odor complaints in September, but again, uh, if you'll indulge me, I'll have to count 95, sir, that were reported, and some of those were confirmed, some not, and uh, if you can give me a moment to count. This is on our website, too, and this is where I pull that information from. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Can you, if you, Senator, if you can talk into the microphone so that it'll be on the record. But the starting when the 95, what was the starting date of the? Oh, I'm, I'm counting from September 1st through the month of September, sir. Thank you. Yeah, uh, excuse me. I count 28 verified on different dates for the month of September 2019. Um, so I know it may be uh, difficult to, um, to calculate, and I, I don't need any precise number, but um, can you kind of talk us through what the different odors were that were detected in these verified complaints, uh, let's say post-October 11th for now? Oh, post-October 11th, I'm, I'm afraid I don't have oh, that sorry, information, sorry. but Pretty. I can tell you that um, from my conversation with Inspector Israel this morning, um, 
this Saturday he did verify nine odor complaints in the morning and they were trash. And the pattern that typically we see is in the mornings, usually it's going to be a trash odor. And then in the evening, um, when there's no uh, trash being deposited, if you're smelling an odor, it's generally going to be a landfill gas odor. That's been the pattern. And when you say the pattern, you mean um, even before the outbreak That's of the been fire. the pattern we've observed over years of tracking this, yes. Okay. Uh, can you tell me um, the last, let's say the last three years, uh, in the month of September, can you give me the total number of, of complaints that we've had? Yes. Just so that we can compare this September to the last several. September of 2019, we had 95 odor complaints. September of 2018, we had 33 odor complaints. September of 2017, we had 44 complaints. September of 2016, we had 206 odor complaints. So um, can you delineate, I, we had, did we have a drop off in odor complaints after um, the, uh, the implementation of the order for abatement? Yes. Okay. Uh, can I ask with respect to um, the recently uh, received verified complaints, has any enforcement action been taken? Enforcement action is pending for this Saturday. I believe a notice mm -hmm. was issued for September the 13th. Okay. Wait, I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Because you didn't say that into the microphone. I'm sorry. One moment. I'm Sunday. sorry. Go ahead. If you can repeat uh, that. Enf enforcement action is pending for this past Saturday where nine odor complaints were verified. And you mean pending? An NOV is pending? An NOV is pending. Correct. Okay. Senator, I have He has a report that he's reading from. Could you submit it to the, a copy of it to us? Probably not. That's oh, could you? Oh. Yeah, wait, wait. What I'm reading from, wait, sir, is oh. I'm, no, I'm sorry, Senator. Are you, hold on. Are you reading from a report. Uh, yes, I'm reading for what's on our website. Well, fine. I'd like to have a copy of it. I think we do. Um, for September, we do. It was submitted uh, with the public. Uh, let me find out what the number was. It was public exhibit. Sorry. It was P9 to the interim hearing. Mr. Wade Hunter submitted that. Um, here we go. Okay. Uh, if you'd like to take a look, here it is. Would you like to see it? Do you want to pass that down? Thank okay. You very much. Okay, so we left off. Okay, so pending is nine complaints this past Saturday. and That were verified, okay. and those were trash odors. They were in the morning. And I, I could have to count that were the number that were verified for Friday, September 13th, but the pattern there was there were trash odors verified in the morning, and in the evening there were landfill gas odors verified. If you like, I can count them if that's... You're saying of the nine, some of them were in the morning and some... I'm, I'm sorry, that we're talking two different dates here. I'm the, sorry. The nine was actually this past Saturday. And I believe I was asked for enforcement actions prior to that, but since the uh, order, and that was September the 13th, Friday the 13th. And that one, I, if you like, I can count the number up and tell you which is which here, if, if there's value to that. Um, you could. Um, it, again, this is not an order for abatement hearing right. with, with nuisance, but it, it is rel okay. it's relevant to the overall context uh, and certainly relevant to the public. If I've counted correctly, per what's on our website, on Friday, September 13th, we received 26 odor complaints. 
beginning at 6.35 a.m. The last one received at 11.12 p.m. And of those, 10 of them were trash odors, the last of which was verified at 9.50 a.m. And beginning at 10.01 through 10.49 p.m., there were three that were landfill gas odors that were verified. And just to clarify, um, the September 13th complaints, did those result in an NOV? Yes. Uh, and again, that was before the outbreak of the Saddle Ridge fire? That's correct. And the pending NOV that you mentioned, uh, was that after the outbreak of the Saddle Ridge fire? Yes, that's correct. On October, uh, this past Saturday, which would have been October 26th? 26th? Okay. Um, that's, those are all the questions uh, I have, but again, I open it up to Mr. Bruin and the board. Mr. Bruin. No questions, thank you. A um, couple of questions. First of all, the, of the 27 verified complaints since October 11th, nine of those were the pending NOV enforcement action, or is that not included? Are those not included? No, that would be included in October's numbers. So it, the 27 includes the nine? It, yes. Okay. Um, were there any other days where there were... Um, the requisite or usual uh, number of verified complaints that would normally result in an NOV? Were there any other days yeah. where, where what the district normally considers to be the requisite number of verified complaints were on a particular No. Day? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for understanding yeah. that. Yeah, I got it. That horrible <laughs> question. Um, so I'm... I think I know the answer based on your uh, testimony today, but I just want to make sure for the record, the district is not, does not have a policy currently that because of this um, uh, variance or the interim variance that you are not going to proceed on any NOVs based on odor. That is correct. It okay. does not, we do not waive for nuisance, okay. if that makes sense. And it does yeah, make okay. sense. Thank you. Mine was a double negative, so you might as well make a, <laughs> a double negative, too. Dr. Bernstein. Madam Chair, thank you. Good morning, Mr. Anderson. I just want to clarify a couple of points. <clears throat> Forgive me. I'm a bit slow on the math this morning. So since the fire occurred on the 11th, there's been 27 complaints. That was from 10-11. Ve verified post. complaints. Right. Okay, verified. Right. And, and I want to make sure, because I, Dr. Bernstein, if you've been, I don't know if you've sat in on any nuisance matters, but do you, I want to make sure that all board members understand the difference between complaints and verified complaints. Do you understand the difference? As if well, not. I understand the verbiage. Okay. I can, then if you can, if you can briefly explain to the board what the difference is between the two. Sure. Uh, Mr. Anderson, can you please uh, explain to the board the difference between um, verified and non-verified complaints? That's correct. Um, a verified complaint is when an inspector actually goes out and verifies the odor that the complainant is complaining about and is able to isolate that odor to a given source and rule out other sources. Typically that's done by doing upwind, downwind, crosswind analysis and making sure that uh, they can verify that odor downwind. Uh, sometimes because of the nature of odors, by the time an inspector gets there, uh, the odor's gone. It's, they can be fleeting. Um, other times, um, the inspector may call, and typically we're supposed to call first. Um, sometimes that's not practical if it's late at night, there's a whole bunch of them, but typically the inspector will call uh, and ask the complainant, are you still smelling it? If the complainant says, no, it's gone now, I smelled it real strong between this and that time, but then we're not going to go out and that's gonna result in a no field response code. Okay, so we would not consider that to be a verified complaint. Okay, that would be a non-verified. That is correct. And there are other times um, when, and usually it's our usual practice uh, that for after hours, which means after normal business hours, Tuesday through Friday, or any day on the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday, uh, they will not attempt to find an inspector to go out unless there are three or more complaints within one hour period. Uh, that can be waived by our management's discretion for short periods of time. Um, 
uh, for a specific site for a specific reason. And right now, uh, at this point in time, uh, we are responding to one or tr trying to find somebody to respond to a complaint, uh, one single complaint after hours. Okay. So it's, it's a little bit messy to understand all of that, but a verified complaint means an inspector went out and said, yep, that's, that's the odor and traces it back to an odor source. And by doing upwind, downwind, crosswind, uh, assures that that odor is not coming from upwind of the alleged source. Thank you. And I'm sorry, Dr. Pressy, to interrupt your question. I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page with the word. Thank you. I appreciate that. So let me just clarify. So we have 27 verified from, from, from the date of the fire. I, I think that's what I counted. I, I didn't come prepared for that. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was going to be testifying. Okay, so we're not point. sure whether they're verified or just complaints filed then. Uh, I could count right here and get a pretty good idea from the codes we typically use. But to be sure, uh, the inspector that in, uh, actually went out would have to testify to that. That and would be that uh, time inspector. frame is from 10 11 until today? Until this morning, correct. This morning. That's when I ran the report at uh, 8 27. Do morning. we have any complaints this morning? Uh, I, I don't. I don't know, sir. We, we might, but I've been busy juggling other things, so it's possible. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'd look to see out of those 27 complaints how many were in fact verified. Uh, if you give me a moment, I'll, I'll count that again. If the chair's fine with the chair, it's fine with me. Yes, the chair would like to hear that. I have to apologize on my second counting based on the information I see here, which may or may not be accurate, but it probably is. I counted actually 30 starting at October the 14th, which is the first date that we started seeing complaints after the fire. Um, and again, I want to emphasize that since I wasn't the inspector there and I don't have access to the little codes that we would normally use right now, I, um, I'm guessing that this is accurate, but uh, it's possible that there might be a mistake in some of those. Mr. there were 30 verified. That's what my data suggests to me with all of the appropriate caveats. Mr. Balagopala. Mr. Anderson, of the 30 uh, verified, uh, do you know, so you had to make your count again, how many of the trash orders or? I don't have access to that oh, information. That right, not, no, not from the data that I have right now. Okay. That will be made available for the monthly uh, update that we do to the website. Okay. But I just so don't have your, it in front of me. In your experience or your knowledge, talking to the inspector, do you have a ballpark what percentage may be trash orders versus uh, due to the fire or? I could make a guess taking a look at the time of day, but again, since I'm under oath, I would say I'm making a guess. Yeah, I uh, think, I'd be a little hesitant with that. I think okay. that would be speculation but, at this point. Yes. At the time of day, when you indicate that, that's normally the time of day in the complaint that it will be trash orders? Not always, but normally. Normally. And yeah. I don't know what the spread is. It's just that having been a backup inspector for that area myself, so I've been up there plenty of times, and then also just overseeing it. Um, the majority of them will be trash odors in the morning. Not always, though. Mm -hmm. 
Have you had an opportunity to go out there after the fire? No, I have not. Not, at, not since the fire. And I think some of the uh, complaints we got in the written complaints the last time and today is also concern about airborne dust and ash from the fire. Do you have you talked to the inspector? Has he mentioned anything about that, or are they doing anything? I haven't pursued that. Uh, I think I did see some complaints. I don't know how many, but it wasn't very many that did reference dust. Um, some might have even referenced, you know, material flying through plastic bags or something like that. But those typically, I think, would be under the jurisdiction—not dust, but plastic bags—under the jurisdiction of the local enforcement agency, the LEA. And if there's dust and uh fly ash, in your opinion, uh, what is that they can do to minimize, suppress it? Water is not ideal to, I'm assuming, to put on a landfill. And well, water is what I'm familiar with. Um, if there are other dust suppression uh, uh, techniques um, that uh, sometimes they, they can put tackifiers or other things like that, but that's uh, that might be better answered by another witness. I am aware also that uh, in addition to odors, misting systems uh, can be effective in helping to mitigate dust crossing a property line. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm a little concerned we're wandering off path here because obviously dust and, and smoke and ashes could be caused by the wildfire and not necessarily attributed to the fire that uh, influenced the landfill. Yeah. Mr. No, no, Mr. No, 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 Pollen. Yeah. No, okay. I'm just looking at the uh, uh, complaint that Mr. Wade, you know, uh, wrote up. So that's why I'm basing that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Andrews. Um, I have a question. Um, I'm gonna. I might have to read it, but I'm looking at uh, pu public comment P13, um, and I just wanted to know if you know the answer to this, and if not, I'll ask the landfill. Um, uh, uh, Andrea Provenzale uh, submitted these comments. Um, and the question she had is that on the website for the landfill, uh, there's a banner on their home page which gives a, f a phone number of 818-362-2124 or submitting an odor report. Um, and there's some in-house link when it's clicked on. Do you know whether... Uh, the landfill is reporting all of those directly to those complaints that are made through this method to the district? Uh, if they are, I don't see them okay. and might not, given my position. Okay. So you don't know? I don't know. Okay. I'll ask the, I'll ask the landfill that. Any other questions, But though, at this point, for Mr. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Verdugo-Peralta? I'm not sure whether you can answer this or not, Mr. Anderson, and it might be better coming from um, the landfill people, but why is there such a strong order of the trash? Is there a certain type of trash that's being uh, put into the containers, or do you know? Uh, there's a lot of reasons, and again, I think landfill could give you a pretty good answer, but I think based on our enforcement experience, I can speak to that to some degree. Um, trash just smells, and particularly if trash has been collected the day before and it's sitting in a truck overnight waiting to be deposited, and if it's, you know, the temperature and humidity conditions are right, the moisture content, that trash, the decomposition can accelerate. So, you know, and, and you don't have any control, nor does Republic, over how long that trash sat in the trash can at somebody's house before their 17-year-old kid hauled it to the curb, speaking from experience there. So there's that. Um, also, the landfill is a constantly changing um, area. Uh, the working face, as it fills up, gets moved around. It's constantly being elevated, constantly being moved uh, in different locations. And depending on the direction and the intensity of the winds, uh, at any given time that can move some of those inherent odors, uh, which may vary with a lot of, you know, uh, factors, into areas where the community is going to experience them. Thank you. Uh, uh, may I follow up on that question? Yeah. Um, you're familiar, correct, Mr. Anderson, with the order for abatement uh, that was uh, in effect 
until earlier this year, is that correct? I had some familiarity with that, okay. yes. And you, you're familiar then with the uh, delay that was a condition of that order for abatement in the opening of the landfill until 9 o'clock a.m., I believe? I am. Okay. And you are you familiar with the fa with the rationale behind that delay as to the wind directions at that time of the morning? It is my understanding that the delay was because the winds tend to change direction mid-morning. Uh, um, and that's Flowing towards the community at Correct. that time? Correct, yeah. Okay. T to your knowledge, was that delay since the order for abatement ended? Was that, is that delay still in effect, to your knowledge, or is I have it, heard is that trash it, now being uh, I, accepted earlier than 9 o'clock? I have heard that trash is being accepted earlier. I'm not familiar with any details as to if there's continuous from 6 to 9 or, or if there's an interrupted period or things like that. But I have heard that uh, they are accepting trash before 9 o'clock right now. And could that be a rationale or a reason for trash odors in the morning? It, it can. Um, those are my questions. Any other questions for Mr. Anderson? Senator? <coughs> to minimize the odor, we would prove certain type of covering. When you move it to one location, you put a cover over it. I don't recall it, the name they used for the covering. But they... There, there is a, a daily cover, intermediate cover, and right. uh, so the final... Cover. So therefore, it's designed for the purpose of remediating or reducing the odor at that particular time. So I don't know why there, there are questions by moving it beyond that point. It, wouldn't that be covering? Um, since I haven't actually been to the site, Senator, I, I think that question might be better answered by someone who's had eyes on that. Um, I will say that there's got to be some lag in time from the time the trash is tipped onto the landfill until they can actually access it to cover it because they're, they're moving across it, compacting it, um, and working on that land face, uh, landfill face at that time. But that's about as far as I'm comfortable commenting. I just can't recall the detail of the sp specifics, but I think the covering was almost simultaneously or at the same time, which reduced the odor. I think so. If you want to respond I, to that. I, I, don't want, I don't want to testify. I don't want us adding testimony. Again, that, that was information that we received in an order for abatement hearing uh, separate from this. So if there's questions that Mr. Anderson can answer, we can ask those questions. Well, you mentioned that uh, that would probably contribute to the question where moving the trash around caused the odor. And I'm just saying, if he's aware there's a covering, then he understands that the cover would minimize that. Maybe he doesn't. Is it, was, it, was it your testimony moving the, the trash around or moving the f working the, face? The working face Talking moves the around, working as face, I understand. Which is different. It, right. Because as one area gets filled up, then it's covered and they'll move on to another area. The details of that, I'm, I'm really not close to. That has more to do with landfill operations. I'll have to review it, but I think they cover it. Uh, yes, Mr. Balagopalan. Uh, Mr. Anderson, have you looked at Sunshine Canyon, uh, the uh, website? Uh, do you know, and follow up is that, do you know somewhere it's put the 800, 1-800 cut smoke information uh, to call in? Actually, I have not looked at their website recently, sir. Okay. Uh, how, how do the community members know? I mean, historically, they, uh, they know, uh, but uh, how do they get the information where, where who, whom to call? Um, well, that's again, that's on our website, but there's a lot of communication with the community, and I would think that that question might be better answered by members of the community as to how they uh, communicate amongst themselves. Okay, thanks. Any other question for Mr. Anderson? Okay, thank you, Mr. Anderson, for coming down. Um, I did have qu uh, two questions, if we could. Uh, let me ask Ms. Tani Zavra, is that all of your witnesses? Uh, those are all the district's witnesses. Thank you. Then I'd like to um, just ask, I had two more questions for Mr. Mills or whoever wanted to answer it from um, for Sunshine Canyon. Um, the question was the question that I, first that I was asking based on, I don't know if you have in front of you, um, the public exhibit P13, 
from Ms. Provenzale. Um, there is the, uh, the link and the phone number on uh, the website for the landfill. And the question I asked was, um, are there any, are any complaints you receive by either, by any method that you have listed on your um, website, are those reported to the uh, district? I am not aware of any complaints that we've received from the public through um, the website. Okay, and if you do receive complaints from the public, what is the plan for the landfill? How did you, what would you do with those complaints? We would definitely follow up on that complaint. We would contact the complainant, um, try and ascertain what they were smelling and at what time, so then we could um, respond and, and go out and try and track down the source of that potential odor so we could make the appropriate adjustments. Do, would it be your plan to report those to the district? Uh, Madam Chair, I don't think we've ever received complaints from the public because the, the word is gotten out in the community not to call the landfill right. but to call the understood. air district's understood. Hotline. But you understand why I'm asking these questions and that is because the public member is concerned that it might mislead the public into complaining perhaps to the landfill and not understanding that that is the proper place or what will happen to the complaints once they're made. So as we've discussed, in if you could just sure, re uh, reintroduce who you are, uh, mm -hmm. and I know you took the oath, but if you could just state that for the Absolutely. record. Absolutely. Uh, Elena Goodhall, E-L-E-N-A-G-O-O-D-H-A-L-L. -L. I'm the director of engineering for the facility. And as we've discussed in, in previous hearings, um, one of the key pieces of our ability to respond and make adjustments to the gas system is timeliness of that information. So we, it is standard practice for us at all of our facilities to offer a line of communication to the community so that we can be more timely in our response, more timely in our investigations. We typically will not get the information in terms of dates, times, et cetera, so that we can look at wind directions, et cetera, um, but once a month at, after that month is over. So this is kind of a common way to improve those community relations um, and to be able to be more responsive than we are normally. Uh, and how would you be responsive? I, let me read what it says. Damaged infrastructure and associated repair projects following the Saddle Ridge fire have the potential to contribute to off-site odor. To report a landfill odor, call us at that number, that 818 number, or submit an odor report, which I understand has a link to, the, to your uh, landfill staff. Thank you for your understanding. So would you be, if you received a complaint regarding odors that, for which you're under variance, not, you're not under variance for the odors, but you're under variance for the landfill gas collection system, which is not working. Would you be able to, to respond to that complaint, to fix it, Possibly, to remediate yes. it? And we've actually um, previously shared with you the communications that we've had with the community about construction activities prior to the fire to keep them informed that you know we may be doing certain construction events. This is in line with that, um, keeping the free flow of information with our neighbors. Well, let me ask you a question. Since we are concerned about, uh, about uh, odors that may result obviously not because of the variance, because if they resulted because of the variance, we couldn't issue it. But they're associated with what you are getting variance coverage for, i.e. The, the destroyed or damaged landfill collection system. Um, would you be willing to, uh, to add to that the, uh, the number for the district so that complaints could be made to the district simultaneously? On the website? On the website. I don't see why we would object to that. Okay, and that would and that would I think alleviate the concern of this member of the public and probably others, and that would be appreciated. Um, the other oh, go ahead. Uh, I had another question, but I'll wait. Good old. Do you, uh, 
on your website, is there a banner to call AQMD, 800 cut smoke? There is not. Um, I, and I think that's what um, the chair was asking us to add. Actually, I was on your website. I did see it, though. So I'm not sure where exactly. Uh, so I'm kind of surprised, unless I was mistaken. But I was on there yesterday. OK. I can, I can look. I did not think that that was on there. Um, but it may be. OK. OK, so that we don't have to uh, put that into as a condition, you, will, the, will you agree? Sunshine, can you yes, agree to do that? Yes, if it's not there, we'll place it on our website. OK, thank you. Um, the other question I had is a question, uh, I think, for all of you to, to discuss or not to discuss. Um, you're hearing, you just heard Mr. Anderson's testimony, correct? There is, there are a lot of complaints, and obviously there is a lot of impact to the to the community currently. Um, would the would uh, the the landfill consider during this short variance time where the community is very impacted by a broken, not the fault of the landfill, but a damaged collection system creating odors? Uh, would you agree to uh, to delaying the opening of the landfill during the pendency of the short variance? Madam Chair, I think the evidence shows that disposal operations have nothing to do with the damage to the gas collection system on the city south landfill. Okay, but, um, that, but that's not my question. My question is, yes, that is true. However, odors are odors. And we did hear testimony from Mr. Anderson that there are... Uh, verified what he considered to be trash odors. Now, of course, he's not the, the, the member of the AQMD, the staff who, who actually went out and verified those odors, but that's what he was um, noting. And so it, it would just simply minimize some of the odors uh, in, the, uh, in, in, the, in the nearby community. So the question is, would it be considered for that I, reason? I don't think the evidence necessarily would show that, and with respect, we'd decline that as a condition of the variance. We will be in communications with Mr. Sanchez mm -hmm. regarding the uh, potential for any kind of order abatement if that were sought by the executive director and certainly open to having discussions with the Air District staff regarding operations. But I think for this variance, I'm not authorized on behalf of my client to agree to that condition and we don't think the evidence supports it with respect. Okay, thank you. Other questions since I reopened uh, for questions? Uh, Sen Senator. I think you just turned off your mic. Did you turn off your mic? The appropriate question is that uh, with abatement order conditions, or to your knowledge, are they being, are you guys complying with the conditions that were? stipulated to at the time that this was approved initially. I think you're confusing. Are, are, are you asking about the order for abatement conditions, yeah, which are no longer abatement. in effect? Because this is a variance, so. I understand, but the fact of the matter is that some of the community complaints is that they were having order problems even prior to the fire. Right, and I want to remind the board that while we did open up for questions regarding odor complaints, that was to address issues from the public and the overall context of what's going on in this community. However, for the variance that is being requested, the odor complaints are, uh, are not relevant unless the variance were causing odor we're causing nuisance conditions. Yeah, the which then it's not, is not uh, uh, properly, appropriately before us today. Technically. Um, however, uh, they are important to the overall context of what's being done in this community. Well, if they don't apply, if they do apply in some way, then they, they are to be discussed. Is that not correct? <laughs> yeah. Did you have a question? Your question was convoluted. No, I'm just asking That's you, why is, that, I, uh, is that correct? I don't, I don't know what the context is you're asking. I, I will say this. I'm going to read it because I, I, I would read it during deliberations. But the, pro, the, the issues we're receiving a lot of, uh, of uh, rightfully so, uh, uh, comments from the public regarding odors. Um, 
I wanted to be clear that under the Health and Safety Code 42353, we cannot, we can prescribe requirements other than those that are imposed by statute or, or rule, but not more onerous than those that are required. So we cannot, uh, that's why I asked Mr. Bruin, that's why I asked Sunshine Canyon, would they be willing to, uh, to delay the opening. That is not something we can do as part of a variance. And he said no. That is correct because they don't believe it's supported. Okay, apparently not. But did you have any, any questions? I'm just saying, looking at the uh, ADA and ICE and all that stuff, apparently not. That came prior there too. Okay, no further questions. Any other questions? for either Mr. Ms. Goodall or Mr. Mills. Okay, thank you. Okay, so no other uh, witnesses on either side. Okay, then we will take um, public witnesses. We have two. Um, we have uh, Mr. Mike Mohajer. We'll call you first. Um, and Mr. Mike Mohajer is speaking uh, on behalf of himself and so we'll receive three minutes. And then Mr. Wade Hunter, who is speaking on behalf of the North Valley Coalition of Concerned Citizens. And so we'll then receive five minutes. Um, and I believe, Mr. Mohajer, you may recall to come and turn on the microphone, state and spell your name for the record, and let us know that you took the oath today. Good morning, Madam Chairs, member of the board. My name is Mike Mohajer, spelled M I K E. M-O-H-A-J-E-R. I'm a private citizen. I do not represent any public or governmental agencies. Um, my uh, questions are very limited, but uh, I was trying to understand this uh, proposed short variance, and I was reading the condition number five, which read, petitioner shall minimize the release of landfill gas to the maximum extent possible. With that said, I do know that Republic operates some of their landfills seven days a week. And based on what I heard last week, uh, that uh, as far as the repair work is concerned, it is only they're doing conducting the work six days a week. So in order to expedite the process and complete the repair work, I would suggest that they operate seven days a week. There may be some requirement that they have to apply from some regulatory agency to work on Sundays. But that is very possible, and being in the field, I know that is possible to get that variance. And it would be really helpful to the community if they operate seven days a week, rather than six days a week. Now that's one item. The, the second item, I'm when I was sitting the first thing this morning, the, this short variance must have a deadline, even though I understood he said it's 90 days from October 15 or October 13, whatever the date was. And then there is a, if they cannot meet that deadline, then they have to go to variance, which requires 30 days public notice, if I understood you correctly. With that said, and in order to be proactive, and you raise the issue if they, and you require them to, if they think that they cannot meet that 90 days, let them know. So maybe in, in as a part of the conditions, you would specify that by December 10th or December 11th of 2019, they would advise the hearing board whether the deadline of January 15th or January 13th, I don't know the 90 days, the starting day. So in other words, what I worked, I worked 30 days backward to December and gave the staff a few days to prepare the paperwork and go from there. And that is my another suggestion. Thank you. Other than that, I want to thank Republic for all they're doing. And, and it is not an easy job. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mahajar. Um, wait, there might be questions, Mr. Mahajar. Um, first, Mr. Bruin, do you have any questions for Mr. Mahajar? No questions, thank you. Uh, Ms. Hani Zavra. Uh, no questions, thank you. Mr. Balagopalan has a question. Uh, Mr. I had a quick question that seven day, is it, are you talking about working seven days a week on the repair? On the repair. On the repair. So on not, the repair. Not, 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 not up. Oh, okay. No oh. operation. Okay. Operation is, uh, I have been involved with the permitting of the sunshine. Okay. No. Just the repair of the damages caused by this fire. Okay. Thank you. Very limited. Any other questions for Mr. Mahajar? Um, and Mr. Mahajar brings up a very good point, by the way. It is 30 days published notice for a regular variance, but it takes the clerk's office, I think, up to 45 days to execute that notice. And so we're going to have to know that very soon. Good Lord, that doesn't leave. Thank you for that information. Very soon. Thank you, Mr. Mahajar, very much for coming down to support your community. Um, Mr. Hunter. I'm sorry? Okay. For supporting this community, then. Thank you very much. Mr. Wade Hunter will receive five minutes. Thank you, members of the board. My name is Wade Hunter, W-A-Y-D-E-H-U-N-T-E-R. I'm the president of the North Valley Coalition of Concerned Citizens, Inc., and I've been sworn. Uh, I'd like to talk to you uh, again, uh, uh, P14 this time. Um, Ms. Prusak had commented that she uh, expected more public participation at this hearing since it had been uh, noticed uh, with a regular notification period. However, the public has observed <clears throat> via the webcast and has heard from, our from other organizations like ours that the variance will be granted and that their older comments are not entering into the consideration for the easing of impacts on the community. While well, we understand that you must grant the severance to uh, Rule 1150.1 and that the added conditions appear to be adequate, and I'll add, uh, we agree with the phase changes, by the way. Uh, we uh, wish uh, you to know that the MVC and the community's repeated references uh, to ongoing and new orders are not some sort of confusion on our part uh, and is somehow still commenting on the past uh, uh, order of the uh, odor abatement 344814. Note that these odor reports are, quote, our current benchmark as to the success or failure of a republic operating a gas collection system that works and or one that doesn't work regardless of the reason, be it from regular disposal operations, fire or power outages. And we don't take any great pleasure from Rule 402 NOV citations. The only satisfaction we get is the landfills being held accountable. Citations do uh, not make them stop, and the public considers them merely a cost of doing business, while the community is forced to suffer the detrimental impacts to their health, safety, and welfare as a result of the salary for and or their daily disposal operations. And I just like, because I'm probably going to run out of time, um, we sought to apprise you of our uh, situation and the uh, dangers posed by the landfill, and we implored you to apply the strictest conditions and timetable for compliance. And we also uh, talked to you about uh, reducing the cumulative impacts, okay? And what one we suggest was stop the early morning opening, which would uh, limit some of the older impacts now reported. And Mr. Anderson has testified, I think he's saying last Saturday, I sent you and my exhibit P9 that on uh, October 21st, 2019, there were 20 complaints and an NOV was going to be issued. Okay, so he either missed one or he misstated the date. Uh, also, the, one of the other ones that we had was require the stabilization of the fire damage portions of their property, which would reduce the airborne dust and ash and would immediately improve our air quality. And these are the suggestions, at least up until now, uh, weren't discussed uh, during your previous deliberations. You've talked about one of them. The other one that we have is let them go out. Hey, it's fire damage. Let them go stabilize. They can put lignite on it. They can do all kinds of things and fix that surface because combined with everything, with the ash, with the dust, with the odors coming out of their system that's no longer collecting the gas, with their daily operations, 
Okay, and by the way, daily operations contribute a lot. They can dust, dust, odor, all kinds of things that we can get from it. We have thousands of trucks coming every day or trip ends every day that are all messing up our air and it's all coming down on us when we understand that, yeah, they're not responsible for this. So when we made some suggestions, we said, you know what, there's a couple of things under their control that they could do. And that's all we suggested to you. Hey, if they did that, they at least could reduce it a little bit. So anyway, that's basically not what I said, <laughs> what I submitted to you. And I had some information. There was some past comments that were made here that I tried to clear up uh, as to, you know, the landfill closed in 1991. I talked about really that we only have a prescriptive landfill cover on that, a final cover, and it was only five feet. Okay, and when we talked about voids, uh, uh, when Josh testified about the voids not being, uh, you know, that the, 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 the uh, final cover was intact, that's wrong because they said there were voids in there and it's only five feet thick, so it was important. But now they said that they've uh, flattened them all out, so maybe that's not a problem anymore. And one of the interesting things before I close is this landfill is located in a high fire hazard area, as defined by the fire department, and yet they have no fire suppression equipment at all that I'm aware of. In other words, they could have something permanently installed that could foam, that could do whatever, but they have nothing. So this is interesting that we've had fires in the past, and again, we're going to have the same problem another time. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bruin, do you have any questions for Mr. Hunter? No, thank you. Ms. Honey uh, No questions, thank you. Board members, Ms. Verdugo Peralta. Thank you for coming and representing your community, Mr. Hunter. Uh, have you in the past or up to the present uh, spoken to uh, the AQMD inspector directly? Have you provided this list of uh, suggestions to any AQMD staff in the past? Not to any AQMD staff. I mean, on occasion I speak, uh, I'm also uh, the chair of the SDLCAC, uh, which meets every two months. Uh, Larry is uh, one of the persons that regularly attends to represent the AQMD, so we do talk to him about what is going on. But uh, no, I have not approached them with this because it's not the place, these are not the guys that I would address this to. Uh, again, for me, it would be the hearing board and or, you know, I would have to write to uh, and talk to uh, Mr. Nastry about getting some kind of, uh, you know, a hearing going and a variance or whatever, you know. So, no, I haven't uh, uh, spoken. Now, if you ask me, the, the reason that I, I, I spoke of that October 21st hearing uh, sorry, uh, October 21st uh, date where they had 20 complaints and a potential NOV. I had spoken to Larry about that, and I had asked somebody to check with him today, see if they could track him down and find out what the current total was for this month. So they either had two NOVs so far this month or one. I'm not sure. Thank you, Mr. You... you you're stating that you believe there were two NOVs or one that have already been issued? I was not sure if, if, if the NOV uh, that Mr. Anderson referred to was the one that I apprised you of saying it was October 21st, okay, because that was the information I had before I came to the last hearing. I did talk to the inspector, and he said, yeah, there was 20 complaints that day and there was going to be an NOV issue because he had validated the thing. Do you have any reason to, to believe that what Mr. Anderson said this morning about Saturday. there being one NOV currently under consideration or... Well, that's why I'm confused because they're saying, uh, Republic's saying we haven't got any NOVs. I know there was one that was going to be issued and when uh, Mr. Anderson referred to Saturday, this Saturday gone, uh, that that could be another occasion, I don't know. So I said it's either one or two or, you know, maybe we've got a date mixed up, I'm not sure. Okay, but you haven't, you hadn't, you don't have any other independent information about NOVs that have actually issued? 
uh, well, the one that I also included, which was Friday, September 13th, right, which I, I indicated. Yes, that I, uh, yes. That I know, and, um, and thank you for that information. Um, but I meant in October since the first. Uh, no, no, ma'am, I, okay. I don't. Thank you. Um, any other questions for Mr. Hunter? Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Hunter, as always. Right. Oh, Senator does have a question. If the variance is granted, and that would work toward resolving the problem of the odor or minimizing it. What does you think the respondent should do? I'm sorry, what did I think? Well, who should do it? Um, the variance is not granted from odor. And as a matter of fact, it know, cannot no, be granted I know from odor. But, but they raised, he raised an NOV last Saturday. Then, then it's not pertinent. It's not relevant, apparently. Is it relevant to the granting of the variance? No. Well, no, what, our, our point was they need to get the variance. We understand that. was not their fault this happened. But what we're trying to tell you is issuing NOVs doesn't mean anything to us. We don't get any joy from it. It doesn't stop anything. They continue. It, it doesn't mean anything. And it, uh, But we raised the issue because there was something at least that was under their control, which was an early morning opening, which has been generating trash odors, that if they stopped, at least it would ease it a little bit. And oh, by the way, if they were to put some kind of fixative on their property and do things like that, they could help reduce what's coming down. It's not their stuff, but at least it would help better our air, all the while that they're basically polluting the heck out of us. Are you, so, are you suggesting they close the landfill while they make the repairs. No, I didn't suggest that. I know some people did that wrote in. My, 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 my comment and my thought was they were angry because they were closed a total of one day, technically, a Saturday, from 7 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. They didn't close two days because Sunday they're normally closed anyway. Okay, but they were open bright and early Monday morning taking trash and we could, the houses stunk, okay, of smoke. We had ash still coming down, dust, everything. And these guys couldn't even wait a lousy few days to turn around and put that landfill back in. And we were expected to suffer. And, and that was why they, the community was angry. And that's, again, our only benchmark is we're sitting down there and if they're doing a good job, and, and I gave you the other, the other months where they were doing a good job. The elders were down, you know, maybe five or six a month. They were doing a good job every time. And then it went to hell in a handbasket. In September, why? Because they started doing an early morning opening, okay, which is limited, and I put limited on there. That was one thing that they could have done. And, and, then, and then we had this fire, and the, and the elder have gone up. So... You know, we were just asking for relief from you while you were doing this, that maybe you could keep this, and maybe they would agree to do something extra. The time of closing is coming and gone. What should we do going forward? You're asking. I'm sorry, what was the question? What did you say? What should we do going forward? But what was the first part? The time of, of closing, when the first fire happened, is coming on. Yeah. The time of closing? Yeah, he wouldn't be suggesting oh. that it be closed. Say the landfill closed. No, I was trying to explain the people's anger at, at what had occurred. They sent out notices telling us we're going to work with all the agencies, which they didn't, and I, and I pointed that out. And they were open bright and early on the Monday, back in business again. And, hey, you're getting the money. We, we understand that. So, so the question is what, what but, but closing. And there was a fire that I noted, not a big fire, but on the 24th, they were getting spot fires around the landfill. And we had said, hey, geez, guys, you know. Uh, we, see, we see that in the yeah. club of comments. So thank you. I, I thank the board, and I'm sorry, and I belabor the point about the way that we feel. We just wanted you to know that, that they could do more, and they need to do it as fast as possible. Thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, were there any other questions for Okay, Mr. Hunter. Thank you, Mr. Hunter, again. Um, board members, if you'll indulge me, I did want to ask the question um, of either Mr. Mills or Ms. Goodhall. Um, the one question that was raised uh, by Mr. Hunter as to why, since we want these repairs to move as expeditiously as possible, why not seven days a week? So... Oh, <laughs> 
I, I apologize. I was raised by Mr. Mohajer, but regardless. No problem. Um, I can tell you that we have been working with the local enforcement agency since uh, the hours of operation are under their jurisdiction. And um, the past couple Saturdays, we have been um, conducting repairs or welding pipe together. Um, it, it's somewhat of a, a truncated day just because the teams do need a break after working six days straight. Um, so it, it's not um, typically a full day, but it is something that we're currently doing. I'm sorry. So on the seventh day, you're doing you you actually are conducting some repair, but on a limited hourly basis. That is correct. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions on on that, Mr. Balagopalan, and then Ms. Perdugo Peralta? Since uh, Mr. Hunter brought that issue, what are you doing on the uh, closed landfill that has been burned to minimize uh, airborne dust, or uh, you know, and and also I think in the future to prevent fires and so forth. Sure. Um, so on the closed portion of the landfill, of course we continue to use water trucks to abate dust from any construction activities or uh, potentially high winds that might um, kick up dust. And going forward uh, as part of our winterization and revegetation plan, uh, the plan is to revegetate those slopes um, in some manner with uh, typically hydro seed um, as well as um, perform the necessary repairs to any of the sage veg vegetation that was burned in the fire. And as far as being proactive in uh, fi fighting fires, uh, are there any plans? We are proactive in fighting fires and actually um, this this past fire, the Saddle Ridge fire, we coordinated closely with the fire department. Um, our controls were in place. We do have fire breaks cut in around the perimeter of the landfill. Um, we also maintain low-lying vegetation. Um, and we do have uh, fire hydrants uh, charged on site, uh, as well as helipads with um, associated um, um, lost my train of thought. Uh, we supply water to the fire department via those um, helipads. And, and your personnel are not trained to fight fires, right? And you depend on the fire department to do that for you? Yes, absolutely. Um, but we are there to assist with our water trucks. Obviously, we're not going to put any of our personnel or contractors uh, in unsafe conditions. Um, but if, if something arises and we can handle it, um, we'll try to extinguish it ourselves. Okay, so when they, I think like a couple of spot fires, who handled that uh, spot fires? Um, the most recent. The most recent. So the one I believe that um, Mr. Hunter was referring to was handled by the fire department. We, we called the fire department out to handle that spot fire. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Ms. Verdugo Peralta. Thank you, Madam Chair. Along that line, so you don't have a dedicated team or anybody on your staff with any fire science uh, qualifications. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Do you have any plans to have a dedicated team or even one or two personnel with that type of background? Not with that specific background. Uh, again, um, we do have resources to assist. Uh, we do have water truck drivers um, that are able to extinguish fires, but they don't have that type of schooling background. My other question goes to uh, what uh, Mr. Hunter brought up in reference to covering the um, existing materials that are causing the odors that he's describing. Are there any plans to expand, enlarge the areas that are covered presently, which it appears to be not that much as far as the community is concerned? Uh, I'm unclear. Are you talking about the disposal area of the landfill? I'm just I'm talking about the area that Mr. Hunter was describing. 
I'm not sure what area that refers to. I'm not either. And what part of his uh, testimony? When he was talking about the, that you want to speak to? No, that? No, no, Can uh, we uh, ask him? Because I, he was talking about that there was only five feet that was covered, and I want to know what area that was, and can that be expanded? Are you referring to his written comments? His testimony just a few minutes ago. He talked about there was only five feet of cover, or was that the other? I think it, it was him. Be, if there was a reference to five feet, it might be to the amount of soil cover on the closed city south landfill. So That's correct. If the question is, are we planning to add to that? Yes. Uh, no, we are not planning to add to that final cover. Is there a possibility that it can be done, or is it an impossibility? So, what is, what's the So for outlook? clarity, that five feet is a thickness of soil as opposed to a lateral extent of soil. So there's a five-foot thick final cover soil cap in place. Okay, so in reference to the comments that the public has made, are there any plans to improve the situation so that the public is not as impacted as they are presently? We, we believe that the best way to improve the current situation is to implement this replacement plan as, as soon as feasible, as soon as possible. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions before we close? Ms. Hanizavra? Uh, we, the district uh, can clarify the um, October 21st date that uh, Mr. Hunter was referencing. Um, if I can just reintroduce Mr. Anderson. We would appreciate that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Anderson, you heard Mr. Hunter uh, uh, testify regarding a, um, a potential NOV or an NOV issued on October 21st. Um, can you verify or, or discuss what it is that he was uh, referring to? Mr. Hunter is correct. Apologies to everyone here. I read from the wrong column, and I've since confirmed by reading from the correct column and also double-checking with my staff via text message. Uh, there were 20 complaints on the 21st. There were 20 complaints on the 21st, and I am not aware if the notice of violation has been issued yet, but if not, it's pending. Again, so, apologies. So that's okay. I pulled you down here last minute. <laughs> um, so that would be two potentially pending NOVs, just to clarify, on two separate dates post-fire? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for that clarification. And we, and we appreciate and we understand that you were not prepared to testify today, so we understand. Best I could do for a buzzer shot. Just, uh, Mr. Anderson, is that verified complaints 20 or 20 complaints? I believe that's verified, okay. sir, but um, at this point I would defer any more detailed conf uh, questions to another witness. Okay. That's the information I have in front of me. Thanks. Any other questions on that testimony? No, thank you again, Mr. Anderson. Um, okay, um, then we'll start with closings, please. Uh, Mr. Bruin, your closing. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the hearing board. Um, I'm not gonna discuss the health and safety code uh, uh, standards or conditions for granting a variance. I did that at the last hearing and that testimony and evidence has uh, has been incorporated into this proceeding, so I won't belabor that unless the hearing board wants me to discuss those conditions um, or requirements. I believe we've satisfied all of the requirements for a uh, short variance as we did for the uh, interim variance. Um, I did want to just quickly comment, there's been some testimony today about odors. We've not come here to rebut claims about odors or to talk about NOVs or construction conditions that might have caused a spike in odors during a particular period of time. That kind of testimony is appropriate for an abatement proceeding. So I, I just want to, in the interest of my client, and to be fair to them, to note that we haven't explained odors today because we didn't believe that is or is relevant to this proceeding. Uh, at an appropriate time, we'd be happy to do that. 
We believe there are good explanations for any spikes in odors in September related to a single construction event, which we could describe at some length, but again, that's not the purpose of this hearing. So I would ask that you reserve judgment on the question of whether there is anything having to do with landfill operations that is a cause of odors in the community. And I think if you look overall at the site's uh, record uh, prior to September, putting September aside in the fire, it's actually an excellent record. So with that said, um, there are a couple of housekeeping matters I'd like to touch on having to do with conditions that were discussed with the board. And I have um, uh, showed these to counsel for the Air District, and I'd like to read them for the record. If, if, if I may, um, perhaps counsel for the Air District could read over my shoulder to make sure I've got it right. Um, so uh, what we've discussed is uh, that there would be a termination date of January 12th. That would be an outside termination date with an earlier termination date potential if we finish all the repairs and get the city south landfill under negative pressure uh, prior to that date which we are obviously hope we'll be able to do so i would propose the following change in what's now condition 28 it will be renumbered i think to 29 with the new condition 24 that we've already agreed to and that condition would read this variance will terminate on the earlier of A, petitioner notifying SCA QMD by email that operation of all equipment with utility power restored for which this variance has been granted has been fully restored and the city south landfill well field restored to negative pressure or january 12 2020 so it would be the earlier of those two events 2020 yeah January 12th. <laughs> that struck me too. No, I wrote 2019, Senator, when I first wrote this and realized that wasn't going to work. So there's, the, so that is one condition that we would propose in terms of the termination date. And then um, there was a discussion about uh, a request that we add a condition regarding Southern California Edison. So this is what we drafted for the board's consideration. Petitioner will use best efforts to facilitate Southern California Edison restoring utility power to the site as soon as practical and shall report by email to the SCAQMD that such power has been restored. And that's the other proposed condition. Just to add, the emails would be to all of the emails that are in the, the paragraphs preceding that so it'd be um, Angela John Jason and the rule notification number yes that that's the intent I'm sorry to who who was oh, sorry. Uh, so the the emails would go to um, Angela Shibata John Anderson oh, Jason okay. Aspel and the uh, rule 1150 notification email okay thank you And does that complete your closing, Mr. Freeland, or did you have more? Uh, my client passed me a question, uh, which I might as well answer on the record, which is what happens if we don't have power, but the well field is negative? Um, it, when I crafted this language, I indicated that uh, utility power had to be restored, 
as, as well as the equipment fully functioning because if we don't have utility power, then we'd still need a variance for the generators. Although it is my thought that the generator variance will only be granted through the end of the year and so that this, uh, this uh, provision will only, this condition will only apply to the landfill gas collection system repair because uh, as with all other generator variances, we grant at the beginning of the year the 200 hours resets and you do not need a variance any longer. So in other words, we'd have to go beyond 200 hours starting on January 1st to need a further variance for the generator. That is correct. And others have come before us and petitioned in advance preemptively for that type of relief, and we have denied it. Right. Uh, we need to have an understanding of, of, of that we are very close to the 200 hours. All right. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. And I think the, the restriction on the PERP engine is still there, notwithstanding the various because it's not addressed on the 60 days. Understood, thank you. Ms. Verduco Peralta. Thank you, Madam Chair. Does it make sense to add to number 30 after that power is restored or if there are any delays? I think it's 29, but. No, 29 would be the termination. I'm we sorry. Add, we added a, a, a condition 24. At 24. The, oh, I'm at, sorry. So is that, that what we're looking at? Okay. Yeah, so 28 becomes 29, and this would be 30. Right. So does that make sense to you to add that verbiage that? Well, um, I'm questioning what, I mean, we have a delay now, and it's we're waiting for the utility power to be restored. And right, but there's a potential the, for further delay so if there's that potential, which would be reported to the district, um, in some cases they will tell you what the reasoning is for the delay. Um, is it just their schedule or is there something else? I think the district would want to know that. Well, I, I don't see any objection to notifying the district if the utility says to us, by the way, our schedule is off and we're going to need two more weeks or something like that. Right. Um, so um, if we could say we, we will promptly notify the district if Southern California Edison notifies us of any significant delays compared to previous at. dates they've given us. It makes the condition a little wordy, but I don't have an objection to adding that. I think that would be, um, I think the district would like to know that information. All right. Thank you. We don't, we don't object. The district doesn't object to the addition in the language. Do you want me to say that sentence again if I can? Yes, and we'll add it as a, as a last sentence to, to Condition 30, Proposed Condition 30? Yes. Okay, please. So petitioner will... Uh, we like shall, so let's use shall. Shall, okay. <laughs> petitioner shall notify the district promptly upon receiving notification from Southern California Edison of any significant delays in restoring power to the site compared to prior dates given by the utility to petitioner. Did you write that down? No. Okay, so we won't be able to repeat that again, huh? I can write it. I'll try to write it down. <laughs> the clerk, the clerk got it. Do you want me to repeat what I have? Yeah. If you have it, then we're, we're good. It's mostly for you. Perfect. And that is agreed to by all. What a great clerk. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Clerk. And we will we will call <laughs> we will call upon you to read it into the record at the appropriate time. So with those two conditions, if they're acceptable to the board, I had one last request to make, and that has to do with excess emission fees. Uh, as the hearing board knows, Rule 303, which is a South Coast Air District rule, provides for certain fees to be paid to the hearing board in connection with the variance applications. There are filing fees, there are fees for hearing days, et cetera. There's also a fee that goes to the hearing board for excess emissions in connection with the grant of a variance. Um, subsection M 
of Rule 303 authorizes the hearing board in its discretion to waive any fees required by that rule in the event the hearing board determines that the imposition of those fees would not be equitable. What the, the word used in the rule is inequitable. And that includes excess emission fees. So my request is that the board consider in its discretion under 303M, uh, waiving the requirement that my client pay excess emissions fees for the following reasons. First of all, you've heard the evidence that the damage to the landfill gas collection system and therefore any excess emissions resulting from that damage was caused by a wildfire having nothing to do with landfill operations. It was an act of God. In fact, Governor Newsom recently declared a state of emergency for the state of California. From that fire? Re related to wildfires in the state in general. Uh, it's not specific to the Saddle Ridge fire. No, not to my knowledge. Second, my client has diligently sought to repair the damage caused by the fire. You've heard testimony from Mr. Mills that the estimated cost of the repairs is $4 million. So my client has already suffered considerable monetary damage as a result of this fire, which we are expeditiously uh, spending considerable money to repair. Under these circumstances, we think it would be not equitable to assess excess emissions fees because we are not the cause of those excess emissions. This is not a situation where we're asking you to give a variance so we can sell a product, uh, such as the variance hearing you heard the other day, where we're going to make money off of the grant of a variance by staying in operation. This is a closed site. It's been closed for over 20 years. So it's not a source of income to us, it's simply an asset that we need to handle and, uh, and to take care of for the public benefit and to reduce odors to the public as well. I think this variance is for the public good. It allows us to utilize the turn down kit for flare number one to more expeditiously control gas caused by the fire damage, which you've heard uh, from Mr. Mills' testimony today, we are even ahead of schedule doing. So for those reasons, we'd ask your consideration and discretion to waive the excess emissions fees associated with this wildfire. And that's our request. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bruin. And we will take that up after the deliberation and uh, motion and uh, vote on the actual variance itself. Um, the reason why I asked about the state of emergency, I don't know, are you familiar with Rule 303P, waiver of fees, which states all fees associated with this rule shall be waived for any petition for a variance filed as the direct and, direct and proximate result of any event declared to be a, quote, state of emergency by local, state, or federal authorities. And so I'm wondering if you are, if you know the timing of the declaration of the state of emergency or if it would include this fire, I believe that this provision would be um, possibly relevant. I downloaded that declaration yesterday and I have it on my computer. Um, what I can tell you about the emergency declaration is it refers to all wildfires in the state and authorizes uh, forestry departments to accelerate uh, the removal of excess timber uh, without regard to various state regulations. Uh, the basis of the emergency declaration is the fact that the wildfires have occurred throughout the state and that th that wildfire um, uh, episode which has affected the state recently uh, is uh, something that warrants a state of emergency. <laughs> and the uh, proclamation of a state of emergency uh, talks about a historic wind event and fire conditions of an unprecedented nature in the state of California. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Hanizava, you're closing. Uh, <coughs> including whether you have any position on waiver of fees, which I think generally the district doesn't have, but if you do. Uh, since the excess emission fees are collected by the board, the district takes no position um, on waiver of those fees. Uh, so good afternoon, Chairwoman Prusak and members of the board. Um, uh, subject to the evidence and the testimony that we heard here today, as well as the evidence and the testimony that we heard at last week's interim variance hearing, 
uh, and the proposed conditions with the changes that have been added throughout the course of this hearing, um, the district does not oppose the granting of a short variance. Thank you. Um, board members, I think it's very important that we just begin our deliberation with a reframing of what we're hearing today because we did ask a lot of questions to understand the context of what's happening. There's, uh, as we all know, um, some deep history with regard to the community that surrounds uh, this facility. Um, and so I think it's really important that we, s we all start on the same page, uh, including the public who might be watching. Um, and the, uh, the issue before us uh, is a request for a short variance, so one that does not last for longer than 90 days, uh, from the rules and regulations of the district uh, from operating essentially a fully functioning landfill gas collection system due to a wildfire that caused, as we saw um, in the many pictures we were presented with in the interim variance uh, proceeding in which we have now actually in physical form, uh, was quite severe, um, uh, burning away uh, actually a lot of the piping, et cetera, wellheads of the actual system itself. Um, and so I just wanted to make that clear, which is it's different from uh, order for abatement proceedings, um, which are uh, used to address odors uh, that rise to uh, a nuisance level, uh, which was what we were dealing with under the order for abatement. Um, and so uh, we received a lot of public comments. They are always welcome, and I, I want to make sure we address them. I know this, uh, this community is suffering greatly, and so nothing I say will address them so that anyone feels relief, but I do want to make sure we address them. Um, there were some comments regarding uh, cl the closing down of the landfill, and again, um, at least even for a certain period of time or for certain hours. Um, number one, that will not, uh, it, it's not something that will, uh, is a condition that will offset what we're, um, what we're doing here with the variant, and that is because landfill gas uh, is constantly being created at the landfill. And I know there were some comments about um, this, is, uh, this is a hazard, there's gas being created, there are wildfires. Um, but unfortunately, this is not, uh, landf the landfill gas creation is not something that will end for years to come. Um, I also wanted to re-point out the fact that while it is very concerning what's going on in the community uh, in terms of complaints and NOVs, um, this hearing, I want to read again from the Health and Safety Code, we can only address that which is being requested, which is, there's a destroyed landfill gas collection system, and we need to make sure uh, that there's relief while they get it up and running. Um, and in, this is what the Health and Safety Code Section 42353 says. Upon making the specific findings, which we're going to undertake in a moment, set forth in Section 42352 with regard to a variance, um, the hearing board shall prescribe requirements, which is what we're talking about in conditions, other than those imposed by statute or by any rule, regulation, or order of the district board not more onerous, applicable to plants and equipment operated uh, by specified industry or business for the specified activities or to the operations of individual persons, et cetera. So I just want to be um, clear that while we can prescribe conditions that essentially um, stand in place of the rules that require a fully functioning collection system, so we've got uh, the requirements uh, that are proposed uh, that were in place for the interim variance with regard to uh, visual inspections, uh, observing, um, uh, taking readings, monitoring, um, trying to estimate uh, what excess emissions are, are, are coming, and of course to try to get it fixed as soon, soon as quickly as, as is possible and feasible, along with other conditions. It is not within the jurisdiction of this board to require that the, um, that the landfill delay its opening or shut down uh, in order to address odors. Um, and, I, I, and again, I say that understanding that, uh, that this community is suffering greatly, and, uh, and, and we understand that, and, and we definitely 
feel for that. And I also want to, uh, and again, uh, we're going to get into the findings which we need to make, um, but I would again, and I said this at the last hearing, I would impress upon the district, um, we, can't, uh, we can't ask the district to enforce anything any certain way, but the district is hearing uh, there, there's a lot more complaints. There are possibly two NOVs that are pending. There was the one in September. Um, should the district take enforcement action through an order for abatement at that time, the board could consider other measures to abate the odors that this community is suffering from. Um, but we cannot do that today. Okay, so with that said, uh, let's discuss what we need to discuss today, which are the six findings. And I'll do this quickly because we already discussed these in reference to the interim variance that was granted. Um, we do know that the, uh, that the, I'm sorry. We have a discussion such as the one, you know, just have an open discussion before we address the, address the six findings. Yes, if you'd like to yeah, add to those. Yeah. Yes, please. A couple of things. The public talked about in their correspondence a likely explosion because the gas is there and things could happen, but there's no evidence introduced that would suggest that that's the likelihood. So there would be, you know, the public need to know that they're not concerned, they should be concerned about a subsequent explosion of gas permeating that, that area. Uh, number two is that it was discussed that at some point in time, uh, the whole schedule could be delayed. And uh, if that being the case, we got the short variances for 90 days. And the target date we have set is January the 12th, 2020. Uh, it's also suggested that if you had some uh, opinion, a belief, a subsequent opinion, that you might not make, you may have delays, then of course you have 30 days to make the request for a regular variance. If you have 30 days to make the request for regular variance, then at some point in time in December, you might have to do that just in case you have some delays after the 13th of December or the 12th of December. Uh, if you were to do that and make the request for regular variance, then what we do, you can always, if you meet the requirements, the satisfaction for operating condition, Prior there too, then you don't have to have the hearing. What was that? They have to. Is it 30 days required for regular variance? Uh, it actually would take 45 days from from the filing for the clerks to uh, make sure that they're pub that the notice is published in uh, uh, certain uh, papers of cer of the required circulation, etc. So it's about 45 days, but we would want to know as soon as possible. That's true. What if they, if some problems occur later on after December 13th or between 9 and 45 days? Then the variance would end and they would have no relief. Yeah, that's right. So maybe, I don't want to tell you what to do, but if you start counting back from January 13th, 45 days, you better think about taking some corrective action just in case that time frame. Thank you. Should, should we continue or should we go to the six findings? Did you have? And then, of course. Oh, I'm sorry, Senator. Uh, if the Edison come at some point, give you a date that they could be in full operation, the power will be restored. And then they come back later on, it's based on the, the new findings that they cannot provide this power. Then, of course, does that affect the, the, the 12th of 2020 as well? For full operation? Um, whatever affects them. But uh, the generate, well, well, we have to talk about what, the scope of the variance before we do that. But I think that, I think that uh, Browning Ferris is very well aware that, is that correct, that you, you need to file as soon as you know that you will not meet the timing of a short variance. Uh, should we grant it? We haven't discussed it or voted. Yes. Mr. Balagopalan. I just wanted to add, I think the steps they've taken and re 
ordering or redoing the face, changing the face from face two to face three, I mean, flip flopping, you know, the, and I, I know they tackled the f uh, low hanging fruit for, for phase one when phase, the original phase three was the more difficult one with the larger pipes, but it looks like they've done that or doing that in phase two. So I think that will sooner address uh, the, the more difficult one because the welding, uh, it'll take longer and so forth. So I think the steps they're taking is uh, proactive in addressing the, in, in correcting the damage uh, done by the fire so that uh, while might not address specifically some of the other order issues which are, which, which we're not really in discussing here, Mr. Bruin indicated in passing that it was due to some construction activities and so forth. So, but since we don't have to deal with that, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, I think the steps they've taken and uh, the fact they are progressing quite uh, nicely, it's something to, uh, to take heart, you know, that I think this will be addressed and uh, hopefully be uh, completed in a uh, f f appropriate manner, uh, as, as expeditiously as possible. I didn't finish. Sorry, oh, Senator, sorry. We, I didn't know. Thank idea. you. The clock is ticking. From this day forward, for, you got to count 45 days, that'll be beyond January 12th. So at some point in time, uh, and you got to anticipate that may be a problem. You got to respond to that right now, I think. Thank you. Um, board members, I'm going to uh, rely on the findings that we made uh, at the interim variance hearing with regard to, we know the rules and regulations are still the same from which uh, variance is, uh, uh, is required here. Um, and most of them have to do with the, uh, both the operation monitoring and record keeping having to do with the, uh, with the uh, landfill gas collection system and those portions more specifically that were destroyed uh, by the fire, the wildfire. Um, also, though, we should also mention that due to the wildfire and the conditions surrounding it, the site has not had uh, electric power since the fire and um, we heard testimony that that will not be restored likely until at least the end of this week. And as a result, um, they also have a generator on site that uh, we granted interim relief uh, for, uh, which is beyond its 200 hours. Um, and so certainly there are violations, the conditions we already talked about beyond reasonable control petitioner, uh, all due to uh, wildfire. Um, and so um, I believe I'm going to rely on, and I and I think that we can. Uh, what's happened between the interim and today? We heard, in fact, that the time frame was was condensed somewhat, and that their time had been moved up, um, and they are not only on track but actually early, um, which is good because we're now going into the those months where we're going to uh, most likely see inclement weather and perhaps um, a delay um, due to weather. So. Um, I think the findings stay the same and, in fact, con continue to be made for the short variance. Does anyone else have any thoughts on that for the short variance? Uh, Ms. Verdugo-Peralta. Thank you, Madam Chair. I very much appreciate the fact that you have worked so diligently in trying to expedite all of the actions that were originally presented. Uh, the new um, schedule that you have, um, except for that one addition, um, I appreciate that. I, I do see that there's been a uh, very strong effort to complete all of the work as soon as possible. Um, and I recognize the fact that you may have a limitation in working seven days based on um, the agency that you were describing earlier. <clears throat> in addition to that, um, well, I do have concern about possible delays that may be out of your control. Um, I appreciate the fact that you're willing to come back and let the district know as soon as possible. And uh, if we can, uh, if I can make a comment regarding fees. Let's hold that. Okay, we're gonna, we hold first that. we're going to go with this and okay. then we'll talk about fees. I, I would also agree that the six findings have been made. Thank you. Thank you. And, I, and again, um, the, the requirement to come to this board as soon as possible is a requirement. Uh, it's not something that... Uh, that the facility is agreeing to necessarily. Um, we, uh, under short variance and the way that this 
hearing was noticed, it can only last for 90 days, the relief. Um, and the next time we hear this, and I think I mentioned this before, but just to be clear, the next time we hear this, uh, if we were to hear it on a regular variant, the more relevant beyond reasonable control finding would be beyond reasonable control to meet the schedule that was originally uh, presented to us, not the fire necessarily. So although it will be relevant, uh, it will become less relevant than how quickly you were able to both get um, everything done and what was beyond your reasonable control to get done by that 90-day uh, cutoff. Um, Okay, so if there's no other, is there any other discussion? Um, otherwise, I will, uh, I will make a motion. Okay. Just, oh, uh, yes, Mr. Balagopalan. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, before we, uh, 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 let me look at, at condition two, two B, because uh, it says to <coughs> report it, you know, the, the daily and cumulative hours through October 23rd but I think that was based on the interim variance up to the, uh, you know, to the hearing of, the, of today. So I think it should extend because we don't know when that uh, power will be restored. So it'll be a longer period. We're talking about 2B and that uh, seems to make sense to uh, me. If I may point to 21A. 21A. Does that respond to that issue? Yes. 21A. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yes, that, that will address. So it's not limited till the, the 23rd. So this information in 2A and B was already provided, provided. correct? Yeah, it should have been. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The same thing with we'll, the, we'll leave it in, but, the condition but it number probably three could two. go away. <laughs> yeah, the condition number three, too, is in the past. So, mm -hmm. but we can leave it in, in October 15th. At this uh, point, I think we should leave it in. Just leave it in, okay, yeah. Um, even if it has been, Senator. Just in case uh, they're unable to meet the timelines in terms of getting the regular variance, my question, maybe we could be answered, would an ex parte be appropriate? No. Okay. <laughs> no, because they should know in enough time to file. Well, they got 45 days is coming on. It's, it's the whole point of, uh, of if it's, it's a, t a tough call, but uh, when you want to get in to see the hearing board, uh, it's hard to determine whether you'll be able to meet in 90 days and or when you first file. So uh, once we know that, then they can file for longer relief if necessary. Um, okay, I'm going to then make the motion. Um, sorry. I have too much on my, I guess I'll just go with this. Uh, in the matter of Browning Ferris Industries of California, Inc., uh, Sunshine Canyon Landfill, case number 3448-15, I move that we grant a short variance, uh, which will commence today. Um, and let me, let me kind of section it off. With regard to uh, the generator, uh, which is permit uh, G46227. Um, and the associated uh, rules and regulations uh, that uh, require uh, that the, limits, the, the limit of hours of operation be 200 hours a year that we uh, grant that short variance commencing today and ending December 31st since the hours on that generator will uh, reset on January 1st of 2020. Uh, Madam Chair, would that be at midnight on the 31st? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, it goes through the end of the year and resets exactly at 12.01 a.m. on <laughs> January 1st. Um, as to the rest of the equipment and the rules, um, that are uh, that were part of the interim variance, um, and that all has to, that all has to do with the landfill gas collection system um, that we're talking about that was damaged by the fire, and the operational monitoring and record keeping requirements with regard to uh, ability to operate, monitor, or record keep on um, the damaged 
sections of the uh, landfill. That uh, portion of the short variance will also commence today, will begin today, um, but will go until uh, what will be set forth in variance condition number 29, and we'll get to what that says exactly once I get there, but uh, that, will, that will be when it will uh, cease. Um, and it will be for the uh, same uh, equipment uh, as the interim variance and the same uh, rules and conditions as the interim variance. Um, and I further move that we uh, adopt the proposed variance conditions in Exhibit C, as in Charlie. And we make the following changes. Let me see if I can get them all. I believe there's no changes on the first page. Correct. Okay. No changes on the second page. I'm sorry. I thought I heard something. Okay. Uh, the first change will be, uh, uh, I suppose it's on the third, <laughs> but we will be adding 21G, and 21G will read uh, the daily landfill gas flow, and in parentheses, SCF uh, slash day, close parentheses, collected from the landfill and combusted in each flare, and in parentheses, flares 1, 3, 9, 10, and 11, period, close parentheses, period. Um, I further move that we add a new condition 24, and that condition shall will read, petitioner shall submit by email to Angela Shobata, and that is, and we would put her email in there. Uh, John Anderson put his email in. Jason Aspel put his email in. And the Rule 1150 notifications within seven calendar days after this short variance is granted, comma, am I reading this right? The daily landfill gas flow in standard cubic feet, which I think is in parentheses, SCF slash day, closed parentheses. So in standard cubic feet per day, SCF slash day, um, combusted in each of the, each of the flares, or each flare? Each flare. Each flare. Oh, you have this right. In parentheses, flare number 1, 3, 9, 10, and 11, Close parentheses from June 1st, 2019 to October 29th, 2019, period. Then we'll, we're going to renumber from there. So everything after that will be renumbered to one higher. Um, what was condition number 28? What will be condition number 29? Um, do you have that, Madam Clerk, that you could read? Okay, um, this variance will terminate on the earlier of a petitioner notifying SCAQMD by email that operation of all equipment with utility power restored. Okay. Is there something else there? For which this variance has been granted. For which this variance has been granted. And that's the end of that, or? And no, it's, it has been fully restored in City South Landfill well field restored to negative pressure. And you have that? Or? Or January, January 12th, 2019, whichever occurs first. January 12th, 2019. Did I, what did I say? Sorry, January 12th, 2020 whichever occurs first, thank you. Just on the email, should we clarify which, uh, the same email train? The, it, the same emails? The okay, yeah. Thank you for that. And then a new condition 30, uh, which will read, petitioner shall use its best efforts to facilitate Southern California Edison restoring utility power 
to the site. <laughs> to the site as soon as practicable and shall report via email, the same email addresses and that same list. Oh, via email to the SCA, to the SCA QMD, the same list that such power has been restored. And then there was this last sentence, which I'll... I have that. You have it, right. That was the clerk that read it back. Can you read that back, just so it's on the record? Petitioner shall notify the district promptly on receiving <laughs> notification from Southern California Edison of any significant delays in restoring power to the site compared to prior dates given by the utility to petitioner. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Um, I believe those are all the changes to the condition uh, that will be, to the conditions that will be included in the motion. Um, the excess emissions are to be determined, and I understand that there is a condition in here with regard to the payment of excess emission fees. We'll leave that in uh, pending the decision that we're going to make on the next motion with regard to a waiver of fees and uh, the excess emissions are to be determined based upon the information that will be uh, received under the conditions of the variance. And that completes my motion. Uh, and Mr. Balagopalan seconds that motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Senator? Uh, December 31st, midnight, is that the end of the variance? That is only the end of the variance with regard, as, is, as my motion is pending, uh, with regard to uh, the portion of the variance addressing the uh, generator uh, that has gone over the 200 hours. The, the, the remainder is addressed by condition 29. I see. Would that include the interim variance time as well? It does. It includes uh, uh, number 29. Is, has been written in such a way that January 12th of 2020 includes both the time under interim variance and ex parte variance Thank relief. You. Uh, any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, Senator, how do you vote? Aye. Dr. Bernstein, how do you vote? Aye. Ms. Perdugo Peralta, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Balago Pollan, you vote? Yes. I vote yes. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Okay, next. Uh, Board members, we need to take up the request by uh, Mr. Bruin uh, and Browning Ferris to waive excess emission fees. And that, that's the only fees, is that correct? Correct. Okay. The excess emission fees. And the request was um, stated in terms of our uh, discretionary powers, uh, which is under 303M, as in Mary, uh, of uh, the district rules. And it essentially says that any person may allege that payment of any of the fees within this rule, excluding publication fees, will cause an unreasonable hardship or is otherwise inequitable. And Madam Chair, if I may amend my motion to include subsection P as well, given our discussion regarding the governor's declaration. Yes, you may. And uh, I was going to mention it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dugal Peralta, before we dis have discussion, did you have a question on that before? It's not, thank you, Madam Chair. It's not that I had a question. It's that uh, I agree uh, with the uh, uh, petitioner, correct, petitioner? Yes, yeah, so then why don't you begin the discussion then? Okay, that I did uh, also receive notification of that um, emergency situation that the governor had mentioned. Um, and I do fully agree with them. It was an act of God. It wasn't something that they caused. and. Therefore, I would vote towards waiving the fees. Thank you, Mr. Balagopala. I'm inclined not to, but you know, but I think the declaration, if I understood previously, it was very specific when a certain area 
was burned. I think we have seen, you know, when there was the snow and it was specific to that area, Big Bear or, you know. So I think just because there's a state of emergency in the state of California, rightfully so, I don't know if it applies throughout, you know, for, for this Saddle Ridge uh, fire also, you know. So I'm lessing, uh, you know, I think the emission, excess emission fees need to be calculated properly and we need to quantify it and know exactly, you know, what, how much has been emitted and pay the fee. I don't think it will impose that much of hardship compared to the $4 million they're spending in uh, repairing this, so. Um, can, you, can you address, um, the, the, the argument was not uh, hardship, it was otherwise inequitable. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't see the inequity in it. You know, I, I, the only thing I can see is maybe because of the uh, emergency declaration but I don't think, unless there was a specific declaration on the Saddle Ridge fire, you know, then I can say yes, you know. But if it was a general governor's for this, you know, all the fires that are going on in the, uh, I don't know how that emergency was uh, declared by the uh, the governor, you know, whether it's, and whether it has to be specific to this particular area or fire, you know, that's a, the state, yeah. I think that's up to us to determine because I'll read it again. All fees associated with this rule shall, and again, there is no uh, discretion, although I, I understand, Mr. Balakopalan, what you're saying, uh, but there's no discretion once we determine that it, that it is, but shall be waived for any petition for a variance filed as the direct and proximate result of any event declared to be a state of emergency by local, state, or federal authorities. Did you have more to add? No, no. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else wish to be heard on? Uh, yes, Senator. Did the governor state it was the act of God? It's the, it, it, I don't think it's relevant that whether he says it's. No, his... no, no, no. It's important because Secretary Separation Church and State. <laughs> I, <do. laughs> I, I think Mr. Bruin said it was I an act of God. I don't, I don't, I don't, oh, I don't okay. think the governor. Uh, uh, brought God no, into the declaration. Not... Well, you don't want to, for the public who's watching, I don't want to, some may not like the idea that we're saying God did it. I don't believe the governor did. The governor didn't either, did he? Okay. Okay. Um, I have, and this was, we're going to introduce this then, I guess, as a hearing board exhibit. Um, and what, are we, what are we seeing here, Madam Clerk? This was, where did this come from? from and Governor Newsom's website. What, <laughs> this other one that it was a, these are for the subsequent fires that have occurred, but that one was, I believe, issued on October 11th for specifically Saddle Ridge. Oh, and okay. this was no. from the, uh, from the website, the state website? Yes, Governor Newsom's website. Governor Newsom, Newsom. okay. All of them are posted. It just doesn't allow you to print it in the fancy uh, proclamation format like this other one did, but um, okay. it's posted then, there. Then we're gonna, uh, we'll, we, we can put this in the record um, and we'll have it as uh, hearing board exhibit HB-1. Um, and I'll just read from it. It specifically says, whereas on October 10th, 2019, the Saddle Ridge fire began burning in Los Angeles County. Um, and there's many, many others, but, uh, uh, but it's a proclamation of state of emergency. Uh, so it is specific. Okay, yeah, if I, it's I'm glad we, we put yeah, that in. Yeah, okay. okay. The, the only thing I was going to say is even though they waived the fee, I think they still need I, I'm assuming they'll still report the emissions yes. associated with it. That is you know. part of the uh, conditions of the uh, of the variance we just yeah. uh, moved and seconded and voted on. Um, so let's be very clear. So I'm just going to, I think there's no more discussion then. I think we'll I'll just make a motion because we don't have any discretion. So I move, uh, we don't because again, all fees associated with this rule shall be waived, shall be, for any petition for variance filed as the direct and, direct and proximate result of any event declared to be a state of emergency by local, state, or federal authorities. And hear, hearing board exhibit number one is the proclamation of state of emergency that specifically includes the Saddle Ridge fire and predates um, the variance. Uh, and we just ruled that the beyond reasonable control was based on the fact that the variance is required as a result of the Saddle Ridge fire. Um, so in the matter of, 
uh, Browning Ferris Industries of California, Inc., Sunshine Canyon Landfill, case number 3448-15. I move that we uh, grant the request to waive all excess emission fees based on uh, District Rule 303P, which requires such a waiver for any event, for the proximate result of any event declared to be a state of emergency. And we're basing that on hearing board exhibit one, HB one. Is there a second? Yeah, second. Okay, Mr. Balagopalan will second that. Uh, and any discussion on that? Ms. Verdugo Peralta, do you have a discussion? Okay. Um, except I will discuss as we, as, as uh, Mr. Balagopalan, you just pointed out, access emissions are very important to quantify. Um, and so those provisions of the short variance still remain in effect, even though fees will not be due and owing. Um, okay. Uh, Senator, how do you vote on the waiver of the fees? Aye. Dr. Bernstein, how do you vote? Ms. Verdugo Peralta, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Mr. Balago Pollen votes? Yes. I vote yes. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you very much, and thank you, uh, Madam Clerk, for all of your assistance today in this hearing. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, board members, any other business? Our clerks are the best. That is correct. They work very hard, and they are short staffed, and they are getting a lot from members of the public and the district's office and uh, also from petitioners. So we thank you very much. Yes, you should recognize that. We are, yes, I think they do. I see Ms. Sunny Zalver on behalf of the district waving her head up and down. Uh, but any other business? Seeing none, we are adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>